Brendan, I, I want to ask you a question. How come you're so hard? What? You just seem so hard, touching your arms and stuff, your shoulders. You feel like you're made of granite, and I'm wondering how you get so hard. Is this Morgan Freeman? What yeah. is this? No, I'm just, so asking, Morgan Freeman I'm just on asking it you at? a question about how you get so <laughs> hard. Do you take protein powder? I've been known to. Oh, what kind? Only a certain kind, though, Morgan. What? 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 Tell me. Tell me. I don't know what voice this I, is. I don't either, but I just... It's like... It's like a creepy... Yeah, it's... You think you guys think I'm creepy? Because I think you're both so hard. It's like Liberace if he was in Gone with the Wind. Yeah. I, yeah. I have it's a like question. Liberace if he was from South yes, Carolina. I have a question for you guys. Can you tell me why you're so hard? This is no, but I, I it might be from the new on it protein. Oh, <laughs> I'm protein. Called Callen. <laughs> no, I'm it's not. Callen. Not I don't know who that is. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you? Because this uh, is creeping me out. When, when I'm around you, I feel like a wilting flower. Oh. And you guys seem like such oak trees with strong branches. <laughs> Let's make Callan airtight right now. That's Every hole filled. Airtight. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, let's. Uh, I try to do an honor that. That was tough, man. Usually wait. I'm with it. Bro. I like that Mike that was, was like. Mike even was Mike like, was. Let's make him airtight. I've never some, even heard that expression. He's heard some shit before. <laughs> let's fill all his holes. Hey, dude. He's the co-host of Love Line. He Sorry. said some shit before. I feel like he was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. Yeah. I've done how many shows with Callan? There's something There's something. Really Did you walk creepy. in today and like, you know what? Let me be a pedophile for Anna today. Yeah. Ah, there's one of you guys. There. There's something really creepy about a guy with an anal, uh, a nasal, a nasal voice. Mm, it was weird, man. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you train, but um, Anna's got this new thing called Hemp Force Active Plant-Based Protein, 16 grams of protein, 6 grams of fiber. It's flavored with cocoa, real cocoa, and maca. And by the way, there's a regular guy on the cover. Should have been Mike. You're talking about Average Joe? Average Joe. Um, but that's... You say that, but you don't that, know the performance of that guy. Maybe he's like right. an Iron don't Man. Judge a book Dude, by the way, isn't that true? Yeah. You can see a guy who looks like whatever... And he will turn your whole life upside Fedor. down. Fedor. There you go. On it.com. O-N-N-I-T dot com slash fighter 10%. Do you off. ever you go? You guys know the deal. The, the website's amazing. If you guys want tips on how to work out, if you get tired of your, your routine, the On It Academy, they are scientists over there. Um, we, we, we had a workout there, and the way they put you through the ringer. You'll, you'll work out. You'll work muscles that you didn't think you had, and um, they know exactly what muscles to work so that you are optimized and then when you're really tired they got all kinds of supplements to feed them tired muscles that is on it.com slash fighter for 10 percent off Let's next month around. we got a firing the kid on it collab shirt drop in go to aubrey marx's instagram right now and see him and whitney Ooh, miller he's rocking it that's on right it. drops next month who gave the aubrey collab. marcus the right to model our shirts I well did. he was he was he's with his a, girlfriend which is a plus I the, and it by helps. the way He's he's a dime piece. They're both dime pieces. What did I say when I was watching him? Aubrey Whitney, make a baby right now. I know. I was he was wakeboarding. I go. I think I'm gonna shave my head. And in front of everybody, Brendan goes, Brian, you're not gonna look like Aubrey if you <laughs> shave your head. You're not gonna look like Aubrey if you shave your head. Then he said it again. You're not gonna look like Aubrey well, he if you did, shave your head. He hung out with Luke Rockhold, the UFC yeah. fighter, and then cut his hair just like Luke. And I was like, no. You know how a girl like goes it's, and says, I want to wear that outfit because yeah. she's doing that. That's that's I have a little of that. In if me. you're going to aim for some look, Luke Rockhold's a great one. I agree. Yeah. Because especially because a lot of people don't know this, and I'm sorry, Luke, he's losing his hair. Well, Is he? Luke, when Luke's my age, he's going to be bald. <laughs> it's high testosterone, huh? We were talking Dude, about that. It is. Me and my, you, Mike and I must have low testosterone. Probably. Lower. I'm okay I've with not, that. I don't agree with I'm that. Fine, I, I'm good. I, I've not taken my eyes off his hair, and it's a type of testosterone, right? The male pattern baldness, that's why it's when you from take the Propecia. DHT genetics. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm. But, you know, it's all, hair is all genetics, yeah. All yeah. genetics. So is your body. You know what I mean? It's a, it, there's a, there's a right. small window, a very small window of stuff you can do to, like, preserve your health, look good, and all that. Yeah. But the lion's share of it is who gave birth to you. I that's agree. so true. I'll never forget when I was working for Kevin and Bean, this was probably like 10 years ago, the movie version of, uh, thank you, Brendan, uh, of uh, Starsky and Hutch came out. And mm -hmm. Carmen Electra came in. I auditioned for it. Uh, I didn't get it. Keep going. Oh, okay. And uh, Carmen Electra came in to uh, promote the movie. And in the time she was in the green room prior to her interview, which had to be 30 minutes, mm -hmm. she had two bagels and two regular sodas. I love wow. her. Wow. And I love her off the more. air, she was, she was talking about how, hey, 
can we promote my workout video <laughs> like this sexy dancing work uh to kevin and bean and, and they're like sure sure and i commented i was like you know do you have to work out like crazy to she's like i ne actually never work out and i eat like this all the time and it's just that's amazing yeah that's Genetics, man yeah I did a fight scene with her. She had to beat me up in Fat Actress. And so I spent the whole day with her. And it's funny, before she has makeup on, you don't know it's Carmen Electra. I mean, she dolls up so well. She's still really cute. Yeah. And, really? And, oh, yeah, you can't and tell And awesome. Them? And she's a good girl. She's, mm -hmm. a, she's really hardworking, really funny. Like, she... She had to beat me up, and she was, between takes, I swear to God, she looked like she was about to fight in the octagon. She was literally getting ready, and then we'd go, and she would hit me with a person attack me. I said, just do whatever you want to me. She is and, really, like, like nice. I mean, like, very almost, like, um, mild-mannered to the point where I'm sure you guys deal with it all the time when a guest comes in, and it's the first time you've talked to he or she. You're kind of sussing it out, like, can yeah. I go with yes. dick jokes with this person? Yes. And Carmen Electra, even though she's known as, like, this, this sex bot, like, she's someone who makes me feel very inhibited about saying like sexual stuff she's a prude yeah, she's, she's very, actually she's, yeah. a good, she's a good too, girl yeah. she's a good girl she doesn't you know fool around that's what I've, I've, i you know that's the the reputation that she has she's not like a girl who's like been dating a lot of people yeah yeah why are you making that face well she just marries true. him oh yeah. it is true that's, yeah well, she gets in a serious relationship. You're not getting the booty right. You don't right, really have saying. to date around though, or, or sleep around once you've had Rodman and Dave Navarro. Like this that, is that, that is true. essentially makes you. That's your someone, resume. Yeah, you're good. I used to watch Dave Navarro at Crunch Gym. He would literally do Taekwondo in Hollywood upstairs. There, I swear to God, yep. And he would do Taekwondo on the on the bag. And talk about his master. He had in conversations with this other guy. I swear to God, he'd be kicking. And with he's eye not, makeup on or no? He not only had an eye makeup on, but um, a lot of times he, his nipple was pierced. Yeah. But he has a very good body. Yeah. He's, he's built like a, he's, he's small, but he's built very well. And uh, <laughs> it was just interesting. Like he'd be sitting there kicking the bag and being a regular guy. Who's Karma Electra dating now? I do not know. Does I think she's, know? I think she's married again. She I don't, I don't know actually. Might be on the market. Mm. You got to do that. I'm sorry, but a lot of, if I, this is going to sound really bad and chauvinistic, but Ooh, when you're, this. when you're a woman in Hollywood. If if you if I were managing you, and I'm not kidding when I say this, if you're a beautiful twenty something in Hollywood and you've got a lot of attention, I swear to God, I would say, listen, I'm going to show you the record. You have a window, and there's going to be a point where people are going to stop hiring you because this is a shitty business or yeah. whatever it is. True. Uh, do me a favor. You have access to the richest, most powerful, famous, famous men in the world. Find one guy and marry him. And just get yourself a little nest egg. I, I Is know that what it sounds you crazy. Say to your daughter, I'm going to take care of my daughter. <laughs> I'm but when, take care of my daughter. When you're an actress, especially, the, uh, I rem uh, Goldie Hawn, my my wife. Just to give backstory, so that I don't sound like the worst name dropper ever, <laughs> as if I hang out with Goldie Hawn and Kurt yeah. Russell like all the time. My wife was on Rules of Engagement on CBS for eight seasons, uh, forever, an eternity, with Oliver Hudson, uh, Kate Hudson's brother, and right. uh, Goldie and and Kurt's uh, kid. And they, they're very close, very, very good friends. And he would constantly invite her out to Goldie and Kurt's ranch in Aspen. And one year when he did such, we had just started dating and, and uh, I went with him. And uh, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell couldn't be any cooler. Like, yeah. you, like they were invented in a lab. They're yes. so like down to earth Love and stuff. I, I had it, yeah. And uh, she was talking about how it's tough. Like she came from an era where she made so much money, it didn't matter. But there was a time where, like, you're a, you're a hottie, and then there's a big gap before you can play district attorney again. That's right. Mm. But you know what I'm saying? Like, for a guy, there's all different phases of actress yeah. or actor. I mean, sure. for a woman, like, you kind of got to wait. There's a good 20-year span before between hot piece of ass and you're now hot piece of ass's grandma. Correct. But, e but Correct. even that, when you're that hot piece of ass grandma— there's not a lot of roles for you. Right. And you, you see the women now, uh, I, I just saw this morning, I forget which one it was, one of the actresses saying how there's there's barely any roles for those women now. Like the, the, the 35 to 45 is really rough. Right? Uh, uh, it's uh, competitive, uh, man. A yeah. very well-known director said to me, if you want to be, if you want to get into, if you like being humiliated, make sure you become a, a woman actress and then try to keep doing what you you did in in your 20s. Yeah. Try try to keep just try to get jobs in your the academy award winning actresses coming in and they all go she's not going to get the part but they let her do go through the audition. Thank Anne, you so much. And Hathaway just did a interview recently and she was saying how she's seen roles go to these younger girls and she's like it used to piss me off but I used to be that young girl who would steal these roles right. from these other actors. So I get it. That's yeah. the nature of the business. The only upside is that now I mean 
more TV. Yeah, more TV and more independent film like yeah. that people actually see. I mean, hard to make a living though. Oh, it's impossible it, to make yeah. a living in movies yeah. is practically yeah. impossible. Right. Unless you're Scarlett Johansson, people don't really do that anymore. They don't it, make a living solely on being just a movie movies. star. Yeah. You got to do movies, TV. You got to just constantly be working. Yeah. Right? It's gotten that way with music. I mean, yeah. they they were showcasing some really popular guys, the musicians who like the Chemical Brothers, but not them, but guys who came right after them, yeah. who are now um, filling big venues. And this guy who's, I can't remember the name of the band, but they're as popular as it gets in Europe. Like they sell out in huge venues. And he said, I'm struggling, I'm struggling to buy a one bedroom apartment. And they said, well, that doesn't make any sense. He said, well, with websites like Spotify and with all the free music that yeah. you can get your hands on without having to pay it's for it. Tough, man. And think about how much music there is out there. Like think about how much good music you're competing with. Well, you know, I, I t- iTunes is uh, thinking, this is how wealthy iTunes is. They're, they wanna, sh- this is their plan that I heard. They wanna shut down iTunes and do a subscription based on yep. it. So it's all free streaming. Netflix they're for already, music. They're already yeah. doing that. They're already asking no, no, you to do that. They haven't done it yet. No, but there, there's already like a subscription service that but I that's get on how my every, iPhone. Every time you buy a, a track or an album, it says, would you like to subscribe to this artist? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, already. Yes. But wow. it, I think that's just in preparation for the, yeah. for the transition. They're, they're, yeah. They're balling so much they can shut down their number one money maker just to do this. And they they actually think that that the way to like Spotify, I think the average like music enthusiast was spending one hundred and twenty. It's one hundred and twenty dollars a year to subscribe, whereas the average at the height of the CD market, the average music lover spent sixty dollars on CDs a year. So so a a lot of people are pretty bullish on that market. They're like people are going to subscribe. You know, I hate to sound like fogey guy, but I I spent probably 100% of my income on filling up my gas tank and buying albums when I was 17 years old. For that sure. was 100% of any I'd money I had. I'd buy gas to get to Best right. Buy or wherever to get, buy albums. And there's just, there's no, like there's nothing that compares to, I, I do think that there's great access to new music. Like right now, kids, especially in hip hop and EDM, they're hearing stuff every day that they would have had no idea existed because it do- doesn't get played on radio, blah, 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 True. just by streaming stuff. Sure. And you get introduced to new artists, which is great. But there was nothing like going to the record store and just like spending hours just looking through stuff. Okay. And like you get into one artist and so you see like he or she is is collaborating with this artist on an album. So you go over to that artist and you actually have to talk to people. And it, there was like a, a real experiential kind of piece that i think it's i agree and they cut they cut out the middleman and there's there's not that personal touch to things anymore yeah books also, are the same also way. It's so yeah. physical too you know like you guys are a little young to remember this but when aerosmith came out with hot rocks or when kiss came out with detroit city at detroit rock city i think that was the name of the album those were major events the vinyl was available the yeah. cover art was huge and and you it everybody would wait and get that album and when you got that piece of vinyl it was a physical thing that needed to be dusted off your turntable had to have a dust cover I remember my father saying did you put the dust cover on and you took care of your vinyl you yeah. took care That's and some old school shit yeah man and your needle and you had to go get a new needle for your turntable sometimes because the ne- and and the big thing was the needle is made of a diamond and it's so tiny and there was all this tactile physical stuff that people their music had a physical aspect to it that took time. We we grew up with that a little bit though with like, CDs, with CDs yeah. because yeah. when it would skip, like yeah. you drag and the CD would skip. And I remember they came out with the shock thing where it's like ten minute skip yeah. protector or ten second skip. Protector. Yeah, I was also it was huge. I was thinking about the other day the disc man. Yes. So cool. And what so big. Like how horrible your life was traveling with music with a disc man <laughs> and carrying your CDs like to go on a flight yeah. with a disc man in your CDs was <laughs> like it was ridiculous. And a yeah. folder full yeah. of CDs, not just flip through them. It's a like B man's jams or yeah. something like that, right on it. And you and remember you used to, and it had to like, make a mixtape to your girl? Oh yeah. Oh dude. Oh. What? You want to talk about a panty dropper? Dude. Nick yeah. Brown's mixtape for yep. the ladies? You I only sneak that in there. Yep. I not only made mixtapes, the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me was I <laughs> I went to uh Chicago with my dad. He was going on a business trip and it just happened to coincide with spring break. So my dad took me to Chicago and we uh we met with <laughs> His his partner at the firm that he worked at, and he had a daughter that was exactly my age. This Perfect. is probably sixth grade, and we talked during dinner, and and she, we got along, and she was really sweet, she was really attractive, and so we exchanged addresses. It was kind of like addresses. cute in that way that yes. like yeah, it was pre email sure. or anything. Sure. So um, 
I used to write her letters and we'd call on the phone, like the hard line and, and sure. talk. And so she had told me over and over again how that Brian Adams song from Robin Hood was like her favorite song. And she was like wearing out the tape listening to it. So I took one boom box and played it and then sang over it and recorded it on another boombox ah, thinking sick. I was thinking I was being all romantic. Oh, so sick. I sent it to her. I wrapped it up and sent it to her. You sing, right? I do, but I'm not yeah, like, well, I wasn't like a kid who studied singing she or wasn't anything. She was like, this is beautiful. So I'm thinking that, though. In my head, I'm like, oh, it's on. I'm going to wreck this chick. She's going to fly to L.A. for me. Yeah. I'm already I'm embarrassed. Gonna, I'm Hold gonna, up. In sixth grade, I'm going to wreck this yeah, yeah. chick. Yeah, I'm going to dress up like Robin Hood, and she's going to come to L.A. I'm going to fucking gonna wreck her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, Robin Hood outfit Robin with, Hood just, dick out. with just dick out. And, like, yeah. and like the, the my dick's an arrow, you know? <laughs> and um, she, like, <laughs> three weeks goes by, we don't talk. And I'm scared because I was scared to even call her after I sent it because I was like, I'll wait for her to see to gauge reaction. So like three weeks goes by. So finally, I break down. I call her. I go, uh, hey, how are you? She's, oh, I'm fine. And we're talking for 10 minutes. And there's this elephant in the room. I go, so did you get my my package? She goes, yeah, I did. I go, do you listen to it? She said, not only did I listen to it, but I had a sleepover and me and my friends listened to it over and over again, clowning you. <laughs> Oh, damn. I was like, oh, yeah, that's well, funny. Because uh, it, it was all a joke. Just for kidding. Me. And I'm, just I'm a comedian. Dead inside. Like, dead. Like, my life is over. <laughs> that's probably what led you to drugs. That's and, yeah, like, that, yeah, that right there. Yeah, no, we did play it over and over and laughed. She was like, it was me and like 10 girls. We just, oh, we couldn't get enough of it. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. That's, that's, that's why I sent it. Yeah. Fucking Dude, just I tried you. to write a poem. I, read, I, I sent my girlfriend a poem. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get a response. Yeah. I got to do How old were you? I was 30. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer. I, Mike, can we can we break down your work ethic and everything you got going on? Can we talk about that first? Yeah, second? man. It's I, insane, man. It is, but it, but both you guys know that that that's your you you have that only option if you want to pay the bills by being in the entertainment industry. Especially it's really, in this nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nowadays especially. Yeah. I, I wonder cuz you were saying how you have like how many radio shows? You have a TV show? I have two radio shows and uh 5 days a week and then I have a TV show 5 days a week that I do with Dr. Drew on HLN called Dr. Drew Live. Couldn't do it. And then uh I um do game shows sporadically throughout the year and those film really intensely and really like short like two three week spans yeah. but but it's it's on it's, it's intense shooting, intense yeah. and then you know so there's all that mixed in throughout the day and uh you know been writing some stuff and, and then love line at night and love line and love line is from 10 to midnight and this you know. is monday through friday yeah and is your wife and then obviously your wife's busy on, on day well before. yeah everything was like it was it was tiring and but i was super grateful because i mean it wasn't that long ago where i would kill to have any of this, let alone all of it at one time, yeah. you know? So I, I, I'm definitely grateful for it. But when my wife went back to filming undateable last week, it got crazy. Cause then now you're, now I have to be on full-time baby duty, any free moment I have, you know? Cause, uh, when the wife's at the studio, I mean, she's useless in a, in a parental capacity and yeah, I, it's, cause it's a one year old, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got, it, the the funny thing about this business now is you, you really do have to kind of do everything. Like I think about this all the time. It's so unorthodox too. Yeah. You know, like this is the first time in, in that I can remember where making a living, <clears throat> like I was talking to my agents, I said, listen, they wanted me to go audition for something. Where, where is it? Where is it? Shoot. Pittsburgh mm -hmm. said problem with Pittsburgh is that I have a business now. And it's a really reliable one. It's called a podcast. I know you guys don't really yet know what that means, and you're still working off the TV model, mm -hmm. but I can't afford to go to Pittsburgh because guess what? It wouldn't be worth it to me. Now, that's crazy to say. If you had told me, I'd be saying, I'm more protective of my podcast right. than the possibility of a TV show, I would have said, you're out of your mind, but you, you, I am so... I, I believe that acting and shows are gonna are gonna go the way of music, Digital. where where it's just gonna be really hard for actors to make a living unless you're doing a lot of stuff like this because there's just a glut not only of content with all these TV shows so that you're working off niche markets you're working off like you know TV shows that's gonna start and they already are gonna start having <clears throat> seven hundred and seven hundred thousand viewers which was so low i mean you died oh, dude i mean you needed 20 million i remember my show inside schwartz got canceled because one um one night we got something like a i think low 13 rating. million people watched it and not 20 or right. something like that which is which is the best day for walking dead yeah. the oh, number one crazy team. yeah well there's all there's so much content that's what i there's mean so much to compete and with. So, i, I and think so it, now it's gonna and not only that yeah. people are gonna be able to download stuff without you you know for free 
but Mike, with, with you having this crazy schedule, the discipline is the thing because you wouldn't be able to do it, right? Oh, like uh, Kid Rock once said on Love Line many moons ago, he's like, people always complain about how hard touring is. And he said, touring's easy. Being a rock star is easy. Partying and being a rock star is impossibly hard. Yeah. Now, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the the thing for me is like, I love to eat healthy. I mean, I love my fast food and all, but I it's it's pretty commonplace for me to get a good night's sleep, eat healthy. I don't drink or use drugs. And I definitely don't think I could manage if I, if I did, you know, but well, you're not going to have a long career if you do that. Like you, you yeah. see it in athletics and even with celebrities or in entertainment where you can have a crazy work ethic and crazy talent and then you can still get away with party and doing all that. But somewhere along the line, you used to be able to, you used to be able to pretty easily. If you were in Zeppelin, <laughs> You could drink for breakfast and it'd be fine because you put out one album every three years and your tour dates were 50, you know, if you went on tour Not anymore. and now, you, now friggin' the Foo Fighters have to do 250 dates. That's yeah, how you the, pay the, the bills. Demand, you know? That's how you yeah. pay the, the bills. The demand's yeah. way higher now. It's so crazy. And they have to do 250 <laughs> dates a lot of times. So when your agent calls, they're like, Hey Mike, we got another show for you. At what point are you like, dude, too much, man? Um, I haven't got to that point yet, but I, I, I really want to. I want there to be that one trump card that comes yeah, along and goes, there. yeah, hey, this show is so big. or Because, you know, it, it does, at some point, you want to get to the point, like, where I can be financially at the point where I can then start picking and choosing what I do. Yeah. As of right now, I'm just, I'm happy someone will write me a check to talk. Like, yeah. are, are you oh, kidding me? Amazing. I host a game show and you give me money I'm and amazing. I hang out with people. I would that, do it for free. You know what I'm saying? I so correct. right now I'm, I'm it just. It beats working for a living. I always right, say that. Right. So um, I, I'm just at the, at that point right now, I'm just really grateful to collect the paychecks to do something that's fun and I love. And, you know, I could only have dreamed of doing it 15 years ago. Um, but that, yeah, that's the ideal goal is to get to the point where that financially, then I could start being, you know, more, more choosy. But I think, I think I came to a conclusion last night. <clears throat> I think I would just rather be, I'm starting to think maybe I'll just quit everything and just be a silly goose and just hang out with my friends. <clears throat> if you can do that, I mean, I mean, I can't obviously oh, you mean, I'm being oh, you mean, be a loser. Silly. No, yeah, but I mean, no, but if silly. you know, listen, like, yeah, if mean, you got to the point where certainly your, your comedy is at a point where there's no there's no poking holes at it like you've established that you're you there's undeniable credibility as a stand-up mm -hmm. and that'll always be there and then the fighter and the kids getting to the point where that could be your life like you could yeah. be like rogan where joe has often talked about it. he's like i got to a place with my career where financially i can i essentially hang out with my friends that's yeah. what i yeah you that's kind of where yeah. i guess that's what i'm saying is yeah. that you, you, i really you, want I that i mean i i just want to yeah i just you wanna, don't want to quit everything no. and just hang out course, you know me comedy I'm works type a, i'm type play a grab ass. No. Yeah. but you i want to really, be able to do this yeah have good food and not worry about anything yes else. i love hanging out and being a silly goose with my friends i fucking Love it, yeah. and then of course maybe you need the juxtaposition of work though, right? To to enjoy. I would that. go crazy. Yeah, if someone came, if someone came right now and offered however millions of dollars to mm -hmm. buy the shot and give us a yeah, know, I wouldn't do it. My, I was There's in. No way. Yeah. I was with my mother in Europe, um, and I, I remember we were there was not a lot to do, but my mother was spending a lot of money on really good restaurants. She loves food. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she said, "Look, we're gonna go to really nice restaurants," and we went to a really good restaurant five nights in a row. And really good lunches. It was like a year. And I thought, I remember, and by, the, by the fourth night, it was so funny. I was like, man, even great food, and I'm a food fanatic, even great food, it just the, yeah, I mean, it does. You can't do it all the time. Yeah, nothing. Anything nothing, you do all the time. Like, I know dudes, I know young guys who, and I won't say their names, but who date a, a bevy of the best looking women on the planet. Sports Brendan. <laughs> well, no, that, before, before, that before was, he said, he, he, definitely he, before. Yeah, definitely, before he there, settled there was, down. There was no one. <laughs> that, yeah, Brendan put it down. Bre Brendan, Brendan, and, and I have some friends who are world champions in this in this arena. Fine cocksmiths. And and Jen, uh, Brendan Schaub. Why not have a belt in the UFC? But I got one in the real world. Jen, Brendan Schaub is right up there. He is <laughs> with with the the best assassins on the planet. He is a, he's a, and he's quiet about it. But here's the thing. Um, all of those guys, and I think you, Brennan, if you could, if you could hearken back to your past life, yeah. you might be able to agree. Even when you have access to the hottest Maxim centerfolds on mm -hmm. the planet, which these guys have, after a while, it's like, I've heard of the guy. Yeah, it was good. 
What do you mean it was good? She says, smoke show. I know, dude, but after a while, it starts to blend. It all starts to blend. Well, oh, look, amazing, small waist, unbelievable ass, blah, blah, blah. I think that it's, it's really, I think that that's a really healthy tool to get to the point where, because it's really hard, whether you're 22 or 42, it's really hard as a guy. And if you're, if you really accept your, your masculine energy, it's really hard to look for what's valuable in a woman outside of tits and ass because yeah, you, you're so consumed by it. You really yeah. are. And, if you get to the point where fucking hot chicks uh, randomly gets boring, that almost forces you into looking at women for what they're really yeah, worth and their personality. And and yes. I mean, I uh, after then you find a good woman. Yeah, after Dancing with the Stars, like I got to the point where, and I certainly wasn't like Leo DiCaprio laying it down, but I, I definitely got to the point where after oh, yeah. my third, fourth one night stand in like two weeks with a girl that I never thought would even talk to me, let alone bang me without, you know, really having to take her out. Oh, sorry. (laughs) I I was like, well, this feels kind of empty. You know, like, I I mean, don't get me wrong. It's awesome. I'd probably do it again tomorrow if she offered, but I'm not, it's not very rewarding. It can start to get, yeah, it it can start to get, um, the the sensation you're chasing starts to dull. Yeah. Right. Is that what it is? There's no mystery to it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, some of the girls that I've dated before. Oh yeah. The thing is, if if you're dating, best of the best. But if you're dating, I mean thoroughbreds. If you're, I mean number one. Shut up. I mean not 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 a thing out of place. Keep going. If you're dating, I mean whoa. If you're dating, (laughs) I mean bring you to your knees, start crying. Keep going, but I don't want to interrupt you. I don't want to interrupt you. The thing is, skin like marble. Melon tits, dude. When you're dating, did they send buddy. you the butthole selfies? Yeah, oh. right. Mm-hmm. Do you show Brian the butthole you, selfies? You need her poo. He's, he's seen all of them. But when you're dating women Why like that, as, especially if they're crazy successful in in their avenues, whether it, for me it's been you know actresses, athletes, whatever. Man, they're they're the center of their world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like You realize, well, I'm like you. You know, the reason I'm at where I'm at is because I'm a pretty selfish person, and it's took it's taken some shit to get here. Yeah. You've been through the same shit, boy. We're we're very similar. That doesn't mix outside the bedroom because when you try to relate to each other, it's more of a business relationship. And I'm not talking about fighting people. Like, oh, he's talking about Rhonda. I'm not talking about her. Yeah. I'm talking. I've dated very high level other athletes or actresses or whatever entertainers and to get to that level there's a certain kind of and it's not a bad thing selfishness and kind of determination where to outside that man it's tough yes. there's not a lot of love there on yeah. either side yeah and you and you kind of have to agree if you're that type a person you you kind of got to agree that the person i'm settling down with has to know that it's going to be all about me most of the time, you know, when like, when, when we met Brendan's current girl, when we met Brendan's, you know, uh, future now, baby mom. Yeah. Yes. Um, my wife, <clears throat> when when she walked in, my wife said, I like that woman. And I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, watch how she looks everybody in the eye. Mm-hmm. She goes, watch how connected she is and how she and how she connects to everybody. And that's the first thing we know. That's why I liked her right away. Yeah. That she, your your girl is somebody who puts other people first. Like she's mm-hmm. not the center. She's beautiful. And it could be really easy for her to be the center of her own universe. That's not, first of all, it's not her culture. Yeah. And, you know, but she's also not that way. And th- that's the kind of thing I think men settle down with. Like when men find, they always say what's really important to men is kindness in a woman. Like if you, you have to be kind. And maybe it's a genetic thing where we want our kids to be raised by somebody stable. I want a fucking, I want a pillar yeah. and I want somebody who's kind. Yeah. I, I want I, a good person. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. Well, even if you're not, even if you're not interested stable, in having but, children, right? um, I, mean, I think that we instinctively look at that in women, right? Like guys, you like, it's part yeah. of their, our primal thing, like the, the fecundity and then also what type of mother she would be. Yeah. Well, yeah. how, it's not how, necessarily how, how'd what you know yeah. with your wife. How'd you know your wife was one? Because obviously you know, you're a good looking dude. You've pulled in the ladies. You've had your one night stand. You've dated celebrities. Yeah. So when you met your wife, how would not that your wife's not a celebrity. She's gorgeous. She's, also, and she's obviously yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. talented and she's also a celebrity. But you've had your. Yeah, no, I you're, I mean, it's a it's a valid question. I I think when my wife and I started dating and then, it, you know, it, it, it got to the point where we were like in a relationship, you know, after however many months it, it kind of varies Fall with each. Into it kind yeah. Of like, dang, we're hanging out every day. I realized that she was genuinely concerned with my well being, not in the sense that like, let me make sure Mike's happy and healthy right this second. Like she would constantly be thinking about what's best for me as a human being for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, like mm. she, she, 
she would call me on my bullshit and she would, she forced me to go see certain therapists that, you know, like the fact that I would just was already in therapy was not, wasn't up to snuffer. We would talk when I get home from therapy and she'd be like, you know, you do what you want. You're a big boy, but I don't think you're, I don't think this therapist is for you. I mean, she was constantly, she was obsessive, not obsessive because it sounds negative, but she was genuinely interested in what's best for me in the long run. And uh, even if that meant drawing a line in the sand, even if that meant treating me like shit in the moment for the betterment of our relationship, for the betterment of my life. And I, and it, it really made me feel like, like Brian was saying like that stability, uh, because I, I feel like I'm, I'm not like a type A guy. I'm not really like super competitive or really, um, it doesn't have to always be about me in that way, but I'm, my moods are so fluctuating and I'm such a, uh, a daydreamer. I mean, I, I, I don't really oh, do well with focus, yeah, <laughs> you know, join um, the club. It, it's nice that my wife can be that person for me that can kind of guide me and let that bring all those other wild things. Um, your, your wife comes from a stable home. She doesn't, oh, have, yeah, a, yeah. She doesn't have a similar background. My, uh, my, uh, wife's dad escaped communism, in the former Czech Republic when he was a little boy, wow. like had this whole crazy, he had to f- flee the country and pretend he was a ball boy for a soccer team. And, and, uh, when, came when to, it was Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, was a doctor, was a, was a physician and her mother was a nurse in the hospital, and that's how they met. And wow. they and they Pacific Northwest, no connection to. They're very like, you know, meat and potatoes. Very, and it's funny because my wife's a real hippie. Like she's super hippie, in that she's into you know, she drinks her herbal teas and meditates all day and wears flowing robes and Ayurvedic medicine. But you know, her father comes out in her in that she, she's pro gun. She loves to you know go hunting and loves to you know barbecue big hunks of meat with me and uh has no problem with me going and fighting in ellis mania she's like you need to you need to exercise that masculine we need energy. to we need to talk about that because yeah. one of the things that they say is women marry projects you become their projects? yeah w- w- don't kid yourself if you get married to a woman who's got her head on the ball you're her project and she's gonna mold you <laughs> she's gonna figure out that. a way to I, get i think guys marry girls a lot of times and they're the guy's project well i i mean i think from what i've you know like a lot of couples therapists and stuff always say that you know women will tend to marry a project like they'll you know what drives me nuts you know what drives me nuts when guys go uh, happy happy life happy wife you know just say yes it's the key to marriage fuck off yeah no my wife my wife uh has actually gotten mad the only real arguments we ever have are when i'm too passive when it's too much yeah. Happy wife, happy life. You're, you know, not, when, you're not that passive, buddy. You tied yourself to another man, and you fought <laughs> Jason Ellis, who was also tied to another man. Yeah. And you got clipped yeah. s- and knocked out on your feet. Yeah. If I wasn't tied to a four-time world Muay Thai champion in Kit Cope, I would have definitely been out on my back. But see, he, I, his thought, body I didn't kept me see up. it. I thought Kit Cope knocked you out. And no, I no. I was pissed. I was yeah. like, what the, when you texted me, I'm like, what the fuck? No, 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 no. Kit was on my team, and Jason was tied to Dave the Boy's Boys, another guy. And Jason and they were sharing a leg and an arm, and Kit and I were sharing a leg. So and an you arm. and Jason were kind of like oh, the unwritten rule is you and Jason, the two amateurs, were hitting each other. Yeah. While the two badasses mm-hmm. were hitting. It was pretty much like Kit and Jason wanted to go after each other because I, I believe Kit is Jason was Jason's original striking coach. Ooh. So there's that built up, and Jason's a maniac, a literal maniac, like probably should be in a padded room at point. Jason Ellis. You're yes. Saying. Yes. He's a wild dude. Yes, he's a very wild man, and so he has no problem going. Toe to toe with a world That's a Muay Thai champion. Bad champ. idea. He'd yeah. get lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he had like three other fights that night after yeah, that. Yeah, he fights yeah. cunt. Yeah, so Uriah Faber, right? He was. Your, your I was part of that that fight last year with Uriah and Keith Jardine, and where ten rounds, ten different opponents. Shark Tank stuff. And uh, and Jason Jason lit me up pretty good in that. But he said he told me he's like you you handled yourself best out of all the guys who weren't pros and i was like oh thanks man um yeah. so w- with jason man it's like i love jason he knows this i just talked to he's him a good dude day. he really he's a is great yeah. dude man the, but i wish he wasn't getting hit in the head i think he's had so many concussions yeah. from skateboarding you know his his history with other stuff i think this ellis mania and i this is speculation you'd have to talk to him but i think this ellis mania woke him up to that i think he's finally like okay i've proved myself what else do I have to prove? Let's just, to do? let's just have fun. I don't need to be 
uh, putting myself in well, potential brain damage. Last from. Ellis Mania, I talked to Dr. Drew after I came out. I was on level and off the air, I talked to Dr. Drew, and he's like, it's not good. He he got concussed, man. It's true, but Dr. Drew, I will say, is a world-class catastrophist. Yes. Like, whatever Dr. Drew says, it's 10 layers below that. Yeah. But, but wait, he is a doctor. Oh, yeah, I know. Doctors, I know. doctors are it's always going to tell you. Drew. What Dr. Drew tell says you. fucking go. Yeah. I know, but but trust me. They're always going to tell you, hey, trust this me. Is, everything is dangerous. He'll get texts. No, He'll I'm get texts during the show. I'm not a doctor, show. though. I'm not a doctor. I know. And I saw Jason. I went, oh, you're concussed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, he, he probably was. What? He probably was. My point being is that if Dr. Drew says... He's going to have brain damage, and this is terrible for his long-term health. That means he's one hundred percent. He's going to not remember where his keys are a couple times. You know, like do, we get, he used to get texts during the show when his kids, he, he, Doctor Drew has triplets, and they just graduated college last year. But during college, he would get texts from his kids, and I remember one time in particular it was so funny because he was getting these texts, and his son's like sore throat. Uh, I'm having really bad, and Doctor Drew's like, "This is uh, this is uh, stage four. Uh, oh, Jesus Mad cow disease. Doug, Douglas is going to die. Uh, <laughs> oh God, let's start playing. Uh, this is definitely lymphoma. Um, oh, and, and he's off the air. He's, he's furiously calling doctors in Tennessee where he's going to, and uh, mono turns out, you know, it's always, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just his son. You're going to yeah. freak out. Yeah. And, and, and oh, he, he suffers from the problem of knowing too much. Yeah. He's just, uh, you know, God. when you know so much, you, brains yep. you ever go on symptoms.com yeah. when you got something, you got my feet. Oh, itch. Hey, you know, who's uh, like that. This guy, what are you he, talking about, he Brian? had a bump on the top of his mouth. He's like, Brian, I think it's cancer. I was like, it's not cancer, Brian. He goes, gets it checked out, and the guy goes, no, man, it's like a piece of phlegm from Costa Rica. bit your lip. Yeah. yeah, I had a, like on my doppelganger, I had a white spot. I was he like, was that's so 100% cancer. Out. That's cancer. I go there, I go, what is this? He goes, I don't know. I go, is it cancer? He goes, what? I go, is it cancer? He goes, no, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, and it was gone the next day, and I think it was just something maybe good on you for even going to the doctor. I'm the worst about that. Me too. I just yeah. let it. It's gonna no, take I'm some bad. Shit bad. So as you might shop, your head's flung off. You should see yeah. the doctor. Yeah, I don't want to know about. You know, I don't they want them to sad. come in with their notebook and go, "Have a seat." Um, we got the good news. No, we've got bad news. Yeah. The good news is it's gonna be quick. The bad news is oh, it makes me sad. The doctors they make me super sad, yeah. especially when my girl well, she still is pregnant. We see the doctor. All the things they go through and odds, like there's a chance your baby could have seven eyes and then he's gonna have this. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah. You get out of here like holy yeah. shit. Dude, my my um I had a <laughs> I had a pain in my side and it wouldn't go away. And I was like, I gotta go to the doctor, man. This is weird because it's inside. So I uh I go and I, I go to the doctor and he goes I don't know. Uh, he's like, you know, general practitioners, they feel around. They go, I'll send you downstairs to the surgeon. Maybe you should talk to him. You would know. Because I'm describing it. I go, it feels like a lump. And it feels like it's pushing in. And he goes, it does? And I go, yeah, yeah. So I write down on the sheet. I go, I go, uh, I, I believe I have a hernia. So yeah, the surgeon, the, you know, those surgeons, those badass like LA surgeons have seen fucking everything. Like they've separated. Cholo, they've, cholo knife wounds yeah, in the neck. They've yeah. separated Siamese twins from the head. Like yeah. it's like, what? So I go down there and he go, the guy looks at me and he goes, um, I see you think you have a hernia? And I go, yeah, I think that might be what it is. He goes, that's fascinating. And I go, huh? He goes, no, nah, it's just fascinating. And I go, why? And he goes, and where is it? And I point. He goes, that's really fascinating. Down here. <laughs> he goes, he goes. I go, why? He goes, well, you'd be the, probably the first person in history to ever have a hernia there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what a and, dick. Why did he just, yeah. And he goes, and he goes like this. He goes, he, I swear to God, he didn't even really touch me. And he goes, you're, you're wondering if this is something ominous, right? And I go, I am. And he goes, it's not. And I go, oh, how do you know? He goes, because I've been around and I yeah. know. Yeah. And he it's goes, like I think know. you tore the lining, the inner lining of your stomach. So he goes, Get out of my office. Yeah. Oh, dude. It was fucking great. Well, the truth is, is like every year that goes by, you get a little lower to the ground and you get a little more achy and painy and it just sucks. Like, I, I think we all look for that excuse. Like, oh, it's not just me. It's just not my body falling apart. It's it's got to be something. It's got to be a hernia. It's got to be. But yes. truth is, it's just like, man, it's just like a car that you love that you drive too much <laughs> every year. It goes by. It's true. Dude, you know Shit how just I, aches. So, and, tr so true. You know how I went to sleep at night when they told me all these odds of my baby having like six eyes or having downs or whatever is I watch a ton of this is true. I watch a ton of 16 and pregnant. Yeah. Like if those dumbasses can have kids, I'm going to be just fine. No, you, it, that's why I laid my head down. Explain to me. Felt fine. Explain to me my dear friend who I have a podcast with. My dear friend. My dear friend. My dear friend who I love. Explain to me. The fuck are you watching? 16 and pregnant? Yeah. What do you get out of that? Brent, just Brendan's, curious. Brendan's whole like lineup of, 
of television watching is it's appalling. It's, it's suspect. It's yeah. appalling. Suspect. It's not. It's not appalling because like it's all fun stuff. Like yeah, sixteen man. and pregnant can be entertaining. Ooh, but it's it, good. you like if you didn't know anything about Fighter and the Kid and you just knew that you were a stand up and you came from the UFC and you saw Brendan, yeah. you'd be like, he watches the history of Hitler on, <laughs> his, <laughs> and then he watches Mike Rose yeah. like re- repeats of and how, to build, how to build shows. a crane and yeah. yeah. <laughs> how to build a crane. <laughs> like, how to build shit. a crane. Yeah. And <laughs> in reality, you're watching like The Bachelor. Oh, yeah. 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 Teen oh, 16 mom. and Pregnant, all, Teen all Mom. That, yeah. What is it about? You love relationship stuff, right? You love I all do. the drama. I love relationship stuff. I like scary stuff. Like American You're show, such a stuff. chick, bro. Not you really. Girl. You know what the difference is? You girl. Is? No, this is the thing. Huh. You didn't grow up tough. And you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like playing football and doing all this manly stuff and sleeved up and I'm a big dude. It's yeah. not that's not fun for me. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch yeah. fucking We were around know? a bunch of special forces soldiers yesterday and Brendan I was in my trailer. Brendan was in like like I'm talking to these guys these about great guys though. They're all, yeah, all great guys. guys. But these guys were like ex Rangers, ex SEALs, ex you know, Delta and I was fascinated with sort of the theater of war. And when you hear those guys talk about, uh, you know, things, it's, it's, it's pretty like fascinating. The, hey, what were you off in? Hey, what were you hey, in? I'm jerking tell off. Me, hey, hey. Tell me about the border of Syria in 1985. <laughs> oh, 100%. Of course oh, yeah. I was. Yeah. He's like, oh, how, how, many, get, how many people have you killed, uh, though? A seal? Let me get my hand in my pants. So, oh, so wait, wait, by a seal what's, and what's a the deal with the Arab Peninsula right now? <laughs> <laughs> and Brennan, exactly Brennan's just like, dude, this we're wearing full kit. You know, military stuff. He's like, oh, I'm super hot. <laughs> and just didn't want to talk about any of that stuff, and it's true. Actually, you're just I'm you're. Fan, I'm, well, I'm memor- I love the military talks, but if 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 I'm surrounded by other fighters and tough and guys, all and tough guys, and yeah. all they can talk about is masking and stuff, yeah. I shut down. Yes. I'm not going to get in a dick for to be contest. to no. be honest though. I, I'm I'm that way uh, in some ways too. I. I can only watch so much UFC Insider. Yeah. I find it more interesting hearing Tim Kennedy talk about like raising a kid. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. it, it, taking that alpha male and seeing how it. how that applies to the everyday BS that that I might. But, but you know why? You know why I, I, I shut down if I get around other fighters or cavemen or athletes stuff like that is because I'm I don't learn anything. It's no mystery. Mm, Whatever yeah. you say, yeah. I've heard before. Yeah. I promise you've been you, in it. You've lived who, it. Whoever, whatever athlete I'm around. Whatever, whatever alpha male I'm around, mm-hmm. I've heard it all, man. So I don't learn anything from it. But if I'm around actors or comedians or entertainers or creative people or business people, dude, I'm on point. Yeah, if you know, they say you're yeah. you're you're scared of what's different. You know, yes. a lot of people. You know, that's the basis of like racism and discrimination. I think that also is like what draws us to people. Like yeah. you, you're also intrigued by what scares you, and 100%. like that's why I I get kind of uh, apologetic, overly apologetic for like the intelligentsia of the world like it's super scholastic super erudite super smart people i put them on a on a maybe an unjustified pedestal because i i, I don't I, I can't get it can't get i can't it. believe people go to harvard law school it doesn't even i can't even make sense if i barely could get through a high school class yeah how can that. you go to yale and, and go to medical thing school goes and, with me with tough guys what i realized is that as a kid i wanted to be like that there you go and it was humiliating that I was, and I was a good athlete or whatever you want to call it. But but I and I and I had a good fit, like a good childhood, like a, a popular and mm-hmm. all that. But I always wanted to be like I, I wanted to be built like a I wanted to be a seal or a, a big football player. Right. I said I had to be a wrestler in my weight class. Don't they say that know? though? Actors want to be athletes, and athletes want to be actors. certainly if you're that's built how, like that's me. How, well, if, that's in general. Yeah, that's in general. Yeah, I that's think actors like actors all There's want no to be tough guys. Actor. No, and if they do play a tough guy. You're playing a tough guy. That's You're not right. Tough yeah. In real life. That's right. And and to it's also tough for me too because uh, we were talking about this yesterday. People have come up like, dude, this dude's tough, man. This guy's tough. I'm like, is he? Yeah. Is a really? Yeah. <laughs> well, Brendan said to me yesterday. I said, guy looks like he's you know he fights and stuff like that. And Brendan was like, huh? You're distracted. I go, Does, when you look at a guy like that, it just doesn't register. He said. If you're not a UFC fighter, if you're not a guy in the top of the food chain, if you're not a professional fighter, none of those guys can fight. You're, you're talking about a different thing. Right. I'm, ta- I'm around people where their job is to kick ass with their hands and feet. And even not the it's technical just, stuff. It's just like until you felt in the third round, two minutes in, someone on top of you, yes. grounding and pounding, and not wanting to just cry like a baby, which ev- 99% percent yeah. of the world would be like, this is, hor- this is hell on yeah. earth, please yeah. make it stop. And then you, that's, 
that's your job. Well, well, I, no. I, I think a lot of it too, but because and it's not Callan's fault, but that's how he is, right? He sees big guys and he wants to talk about fighting how tough they are. And you know, I'm, I'm around Callan all the time, so I developed this kind of defensive mechanism where I'm like, no, dude, he's not because of his size, he's not tough. Right. He's just not. In yet. fact, he can be counterproductive because totally totally yeah. yeah. he has this outside shell that he's tough if you're tough you don't act like that you don't yeah. dress like that you yeah. don't look like it. it's all a show and because of his size no one's really gonna mess with him so he's probably the least toughest guy on the lot right that's now. why that's my big problem with modern competition jujitsu especially in the gi mm. is that it now it is a big benefit to be a swole dude and you know, like it. Oh, there's some sauce up, boy. Super, super yoked up, and and it kind of takes away. Like, I, I definitely am like the Eddie Bravo Invitational. I think is a is a better move, you know, towards where the 100%. the sport should go because it it ba it's based more on you know your e technique. EBI and stuff. is like, the best jiu jitsu competition, bar none, right now. Yeah. There's nothing even close Eddie, to it. the Eddie Bravo. By far, the, really. The, the platform. Why is that? The excitement. The mm -hmm. level of competitors he has just the, the whole setup that he has going on because i think because of the ruling and the way the the rounds are set up and stuff y yeah you could be juiced out of your mind and you could be a really talented purple belt where in like a like a uh jujitsu uh is it iggf i think uh what uh, ib ibjjf yeah um that really will take you places like being a, a mo roided monster you can you can kind of you can forego a little bit of technique whereas it doesn't matter how juiced up you are if you're going against a slick black belt at ebi he's gonna he's gonna get you he's gonna get you, you know? mm -hmm. um a lot with the growth of jiu-jitsu and popularity you're gonna and this is in every sport the bigger the sport gets you're gonna get more athletes on juice because yeah. there's more at stake so you're gonna get these other athletes who are juiced out of their mind to compete so it's a sign that jiu-jitsu is getting a little bigger. It also hurts the sport. Jiu-jitsu and weed. I mean, excuse me, steroids and weed. That's all <laughs> over. That's that's jiu-jitsu right now. It's like yeah, mm -hmm. just danked out that's of your mind, roided right? it up. Yeah, yeah man. Gee whiz. It's funny because I, I was I was talking to Brendan like a couple months ago, uh, just uh, totally unrelated to this, and I was saying how I pretty much stopped rolling altogether and just got into to Muay Thai, and like I'm really really into Muay Thai, and mainly because i love the sport i love muay thai i love to do it but also like with my afternoon show now i have to be out of, out of you know up and at them in the middle of the day that means i have to roll early in the morning mm -hmm. and it's really hard to get Fuck a brazilian that. dude out of bed and like ready to oh, go early? whereas every thai dude he'll get a, you know a yeah, mexican boxer go. or like a your local boxer or a thai guy He's like, oh yeah, yeah. You want to train at seven a.m.? I'll already be up doing road work. I'm I'm ready to go. That's you know what yeah, I'm saying? Man. Yeah, different culture for that's, sure. That's funny, man. I'm a late sleeper. I don't like it. Rolling in the morning is like I don't know. It's a good way to get injured. I'm all stiff. But Not really. Old. I do it on Saturday mornings. Yeah. You yeah, do. but you're Gracie's very Henner protected. Henner. Yeah, Henner, Henner especially like the Gracie Academy dudes. They're they're so on Clockwork. point. They're they're Clockwork. so regimented, organized. Like. You know, for for all the talk about, you know, I always talk about being, you know, I, I look at that guy's a tough guy and stuff like that. The truth is, you know, I was thinking about this. I, I have gotten to a point where, <clears throat> what really matters to me and what's interesting to me, as we were talking about, is is being creative. It's being, you know, I was thinking about raising my son. And I was like, boy, you know, I'd like him to know how to do jujitsu, I mm -hmm. guess, and do a little boxing. But talk about an irrelevant piece of hardware. Uh, tell about talk about it sort of in many ways. I'm not saying you don't learn a lot from combat sports and stuff, but th in a way that that software that you're putting into your body is pretty outdated. And well, I, was, I disagree. I'm, no, I, I know. I, I I'm not saying my kids aren't going to do sports. I think you get a lot from them. They're in Calabasas, but, so you're already but, but you just get a lot of stuff from from sports from competition. You yeah. Know? But I was just thinking about the badasses of the next 15 years are going to be those people that can basically erase all the data on your phone. Right. <laughs> you know, that can hack into your, into your life. Or, and, or yeah. look, paint a picture. Like, uh, honestly, that's, that's really what makes humans humans. What separates us from, you know, you, now you're seeing monkeys make their own sp s'mores. Yeah. You know, light the match, throw it, start a fire, put the marshmallows on there. What separates us from them it really Pretend is the potential. fact that we can make something Sheerly for appreciation, yes, not sure. for function. That's yeah, that's very and survive, yeah. and I I was thinking about like I I think you spend a lot of time naturally when you have a child going, what do I want for her? What do I want for him? And I I came to the conclusion I don't really care what she does for a living. I don't really care how much money. Like I just don't want my kid to be an asshole. Yeah, you know I just yeah. I I would be so 
if my kid came home with straight D's and F's, I wouldn't be happy. But if someone came home and was like, oh, your daughter was a mean girl and she made my daughter cry because she said that, I'd be like, I'd be so I mortified. Agree. I would too. I'd be you mortified. Just want good, yeah. You want a good person. But uh, my biggest fear, I, I want a good person. I don't want a loser. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who's doing drugs and is a bad influence on other kids and you know just shits all over the shop name. I don't want that. There, There is, though, like a, a confusion, I think, in today's world as we raise our children in terms of identity in terms of what is what is your identity anymore it's we're we're so it's so amorphous and difficult in a way to kind of like put your finger on like i have a traditional notion of what masculinity is yeah. and i'd like my son to kind of it's almost like i guess if you really were serious i would raise my kid to be I mean, just saying, I put him in computer programming camp because he'd sure. be able to write code. And I think pretty soon all of us are going to be considered illiterate by our children because they can't. Can you imagine my dad can't even read code or write code? Yeah. And that's what's that's the new literacy of the of the age. And what I think is interesting is that I don't know if that's somebody. If I raise my son that way, I'm not sure that's somebody I want to hang out with. <laughs> the kind of guy I like to hang out with does have a little caveman in him, does have a little silliness in him. Yeah. You know, so, so it's just going to be interesting. Well, but you bring up a, f- a good point about identity in that 30 years ago, not not that long ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was a sense you were kind of restricted. Now you have the paradox of choice as a guy. You get out of high school and it's like, what am I going to do? I mean, when Scary. my dad got out of high school, it was like, join the military, go to college, get a job. There's a yeah. plan. Yeah. Go, go do something, you know? And obviously I, I'm it's great and liberating that you can do whatever you want with the world, but it also is like how it's impossible to define yourself in a world where you're just floating in space. Not only that, let me throw another wrench in the the thing. They had a bunch of people talking, smart people on the BBC talking about, do you know that in the next 10 years, do you know what the one piece of technology that's going to change everything? It's going to just change everything. And nobody really knows. It's the train that's going to be coming towards us. Do you know what that one piece of technology is? The butt to butt double dong. Not bad. I was close. Same. I was thinking the same. Very thing. close. But think about it, because it's. I, I hadn't thought about it until they were talking about it, and it was kind of fascinating. Currency. It's Cur- going to change. Currency, yeah. That's not bad, but no, but that's not bad, and probably. Mm-hmm. But that's a good answer. But there's a piece of technology. 3D imaging. There you go. <clears throat> Being able to print. Yeah. Print. Another yeah, brain busters. Thank you. Printing. Um, objects are what they were talking about. Well, first of all, being able to print guns is a major problem. Guns is scary. But everything else, too. And so what that's going... It's a good thing, by the way. It's pretty amazing that we're going to be able to print things. It's going to cut back on having to transport materials and things like that, save on gas, et cetera, et cetera. But what that's going to do to the manufacturing industry, what that's going to do to the economy, what that's going to do to people that actually make things is going to be so disruptive. Yeah, you're going to have and, a worldwide Detroit. Well, it, it, mm. it and then it, then it leaves you with the question of what do I get my son and my daughter prepared for? I don't know what the economy of the 21st century it, though, right? is coming. Do, don't you just plan to make the best person possible and then they're going to adjust to society? I guess so, right? 100%. I mean, I guess I guess you you teach them models of behavior. That's why you had them do team sports and individual yeah, sport man. playing instrument. But what about you know? this, Mike? So you and your wife are successful people. I don't know how you were raised. You said mm-hmm. your wife was... Uh, I don't know if she grew up rich or wealthy or whatever. Well, it, certainly comfortable. I mean, they were, she, she wasn't she a Trump by any means, yeah. but they never like were wondering how they were going to get by. Yeah, 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 but your your kid's going to come into a world, whatever, you know, you live in a great area, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's very nice, money's not an issue. So your kid's concerns are different because she's going to grow totally. up financially stable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, that, I mean, and and I think that's another thing is that I was lucky in that I certainly grew up in a in a comfortable financial environment, but my dad made it made it almost mandatory that I had like jobs. That is so and because huge. I had because I was such a shitty student, prior to getting hired at K Rock and prior to getting clean, all I had was blue collar jobs sure. and all I had was asshole bosses. Yeah. So now when like I hear people complaining about like, oh well, this guy's, you know, he wants me to work overtime on day. I was like, I used to have this guy, Sam Rahimian who owned a gas station that I was a mechanic in, 
who would just come and yell at you. It would just tell you what a piece of shit you are. He's like, you see, my friend? You see this gas station, man? He's my pie. Your piece of pie? It doesn't exist, fuckhead. Okay? <laughs> fuck Get back to it. It <laughs> doesn't exist, fuckhead. My pie. It's all. It's my yeah, pie. Everybody think they have a fucking piece of the pie. I work hard. I come to this country. This is fucking my pie, motherfucker. <laughs> my and I, and, 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 you tried to steal listen, my pie? I love best, that guy. Best shit ever. Yeah. No, like, I look back on it, and it, he's he's right. Yeah. You know, like, it, I, there's no, there was no, I, I had horrible jobs where you really worked hard to and and i i think that that that's another thing too and it's not even kids fault nowadays but because of like the ubiquity of kind of recognition on a wide scale with like twitter and and internet and and 10,000 tv channels and whatnot i think you're getting kind of convinced that like well my 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 slot in the entertainment industry is waiting for me and uh, yeah. i'll grab and here it comes and i don't need to know how to read a book and or yeah. turn a wrench or swing a hammer i mean i'm gonna be the next that's not the way you know, it works yeah i'm gonna be the next pooty poo well I, I i think the biggest thing parents can do for their kid and that's the biggest thing my dad gave me was a work ethic like i saw my dad just grinding like a motherfucker yeah because if too. there's no work ethic you're screwed man and i was watching uh it's my favorite show right now it's uh getting coffee with comedians in cars yeah jerry yeah seinfeld. yeah it's jerry seinfeld and kevin hart and Jerry Seinfeld uh, goes, yeah, my, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's fucking Scrooge McDuck of the comedians, right? He's so rich. Yeah. And he said, yeah, my kid goes, dad, are we rich? And Kevin Hart was like, how'd you answer? And he goes, I am. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah, like, I am. Right. It's you a good some, answer. He's like, you have some shit to do. Yes. Yeah. I'm good. And you're good till you're 16, but you're not rich by any means. I love that. You have some shit good to answer. do. And, yeah. Good and answer. And like comedy, stand-up comedy is a perfect example of what it means like you can have all the talent in the world and some people at who are a list top of the heap uh stand-ups maybe aren't the most talented some of them are every single one of them you can draw a through line the common denominator they're all grinders there was all decades of just yeah, well man. the other dudes were banging the waitress at the at the store they were in the back of writing the, writing, Jay writing, Leno writing talks about yeah. this he was on rogan and he goes i was uh he, he had some big show the next day. It was when he first started Tonight Show, and he goes, and I have to write my opening monologue. And my competitor, um, you know, I'm writing my thing. I turn on the TV, and it's a Lakers game. I see my competitor sitting front row. Yeah. And he goes, and I'm writing, and he goes, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way his monologue is going to be as good as mine. He has to be on the exact same time as me tomorrow, and he's playing grab ass at this basketball game right and i'm here grinding and obviously he jay leno's a jay leno's a great example of also where i think it can get too far because i mean what's jay leno's life really like when you Denim did the shirts and porsche right well, Very similar you, okay you got the garage and you did the tonight show forever for you know grinding and then on your weekends always doing uh, your vegas show like I how, much, how much how much family time how much personal enjoyment he's friends? gonna look back on it and be like yeah I'm, I'm one of the greatest of all time but when he's on his deathbed that's not what you care about you care about like what does my son think of me True. like what did does i get back kids? to the, i don't know I, mean, I, I agree with you mike i i think about that and wrestle with it all the time and that's what i was starting to talk about i was like Man, I, I, I've realized that connecting with friends mm -hmm. and ha having those moments where I'm just laughing and hanging out, because I got, I make, I'm fine financially, you know, I mean, I'm right. not super rich or anything, but, you know, I don't, I'm just not a guy who needs a lot. I'm, I'm not, and, and uh, I don't want to raise my kids with, even if I had Jerry Simon up file money, I'd probably say the same goddamn thing that my you kids. You have good money, Count, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the, but, the, but the point is, the point is, is that you get to a point where, I want to measure my life with the number of laughs I've had. That's a huge part of the equation. I want to Sounds accomplish like stuff, shirt, but, yeah. but I want to accomplish stuff. But I also want to. I want to mark the times I. I'm, I was a, like just. I have so Sounds much like fun I'm reading being an Hallmark idiot. cards right now. I know, but I feel that way. Well, I, I was know? never the life of the party, even when I, at the height. Eyes, Brandon. Even at the height of my my drug use and, and drinking, I never was that guy who was like getting thrown out of bars. I mean, it happened, but I, I was, I was a very reclusive person and I never engaged in having any experiences. It was all, it was all hotel rooms in my apartment, drinking and using drugs. Yeah. And that carried on into years into my sobriety. And I realized like, okay, I can get this next job. Okay. I can get a promotion and this is great. It's very rewarding for a moment. But I I don't have any experiences to think of, you know. When I was looking yeah. back on my on my life, um, in in uh, up until very recently, and things have things have changed certainly. Um, but you know, when I hear people talk with such reverence of like the greatest moments of their life when they did A, B, or C, and it could be something as like, you know, 
you hear you hear Kirk Gibson talk about hitting uh, the home game running home run in in eighty eight, sure. or the day my child was born. Yeah, I, I I was sitting at that point in my life where I go, I don't really have anything that is that special to me. I don't have these experiences. Like I have these kind of trophies in my mind that I can look back on and go, oh, well, that was awesome. I got this job and I was able career. to right. But I I and and uh, Drew had this uh, other. Um, doctor that he worked with for a long time when they worked at this psychiatric hospital in Pasadena for like 20 years. And, and uh, they were both shooting the shit before Loveline one night. Um, and they were talking about how in their time working at that psychiatric hospital, when they would be with people who were, they knew they were going to die, you know, and they were, there was like a hospice attached to the, these are guys and gals that are, they could go at any moment. Yeah. Not one of them said like, man, I loved my Mercedes, man. I loved my, they, all of them said, they just would would ramble about like their wife or ramble about their, their friends. Their, their, their times, friends. And, they want. Yeah. I've had. I've been. I've had those experiences with people that are dying who just wanted to talk about the times they had with their friends. I think what I'm really saying is that when I read about Kobe Bryant and what it takes to be great, yeah, which means like just uh, you know I, he, his schedule is so ridiculous. Not worth it to me. Yeah, I actually. Oh, I agree. I it's not worth it to and, me. And, and you like, wonder. I wonder. That's like the honest truth. There's of how people I feel. that are, I think, burdened by that, where they desperately want to be the best. You know, and and you, there is a burden that comes with that. Like I, I, I definitely, ever, I definitely don't. I don't. I don't need to be. I I love Howard Stern, but I don't need to be that guy. I'm, dude. I get paid money to be on the radio. I'm it's cool. Insane. You know, like you're, I can send my kid to college, hopefully by doing that and being on TV. Awesome. I don't balance. need to be it's called balance. Secrets, no, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm right. telling you, me and Rogan were talking about this to, to be the best of the best and be that 1% of 1% of professional athletes. I know a ton of them very, very well, dude. They it's, it takes a unique type of person and there's no balance. There's they're, zero, they're all a little there's, fucked there's up. Zero yeah. balance. Yeah. And what you see on Instagram and then what you see that when you when I see them at night crying themselves to sleep yeah. because they're not happy because they're so great because they're trying to fill this insane void that can never fill. Dude, I'm telling you, that level of greatness, people wish they had it. You don't, man. I bet you. you I you bet did, you. I'm that's you, why. Uh, if you're in their shoes, yeah. you do not want that life. Yeah. Jor Michael Jordan was if there was TMZ sports in the mid 90s, we would have a totally different view of Michael Jordan. I agree. Is, well, that, they, is that right? They, they talk about Michael so. now. They yeah. talk about Michael now. The people that work for him on the plane. If Michael's up, everyone else has to be up. You have to be up. He, the, the way he does things and conducts, I mean, it's a tough. Magic Johnson it's talks about tough, playing man. golf with him wow. and stuff during the Olympics. Miserable. They were like in Barcelona, and he's like, he's like, Michael, we got to We got to go back to the hotel. We got it. He's like, no, fucking one more hole, and it's ten thousand dollars. You know, a, a stroke. And like he's just that insane. Scotty you know? Pippen talked about how. The I forget what celebrity it was, but celebrity girl and Michael and Scotty both wanted her. She ended up hooking up with Scotty. Michael Jordan waited in the lobby of the hotel to talk shit to this girl. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. How Whoa. crazy is that? Yeah, what a dick. Although I bet greatest you, of all time to, to be yeah. greatness, greatest you're not going to be. It that cuts across. Going. It cuts across all. Right, it cuts everything. across everything. Brian, you you're know ambitious. This. We've talked about you're ambitious. We've talked about certain things. I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah. you're ambitious across the board. I I yeah. think you that you have I, appetites. I bet, and I don't know the guy, so I and I don't want to speak out of school, but I bet you that's why we're seeing that behavior with John Jones. It's just like you you can't wrap your head around being that awesome without you know looking for an outlet to kind of feel human, you know, to be that dominant. And to be that amazing at something where he could come in and really have people talk about, oh, he didn't have a good camp. It meant like he literally didn't train. He just went in and whooped a dude's ass. He literally just lost a ton of weight, went in there, beat a dude up. And beat up an a, the elite best in the world fight. The yeah, best elite world class fighter. You got to search somewhere, you know, and, and sometimes you you end up finding things that aren't necessarily the most helpful. Well, it's you know? very rare where God's like, all right, I'm going to give you all the talent in the world, and you're going to be a stable person. You're going to be a good person. Yeah. You're going to be really funny, huge dick. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're going to be faithful. That guy does not exist, Yeah, that's, if, especially if he's a good athlete or really famous. That's like the, the, the dime pieces you used to go through all the time. Somewhere on their body, they had like a hairy butthole, something, or like a yeah, freaking, a, you know, uh, like a clit zit something, or something. Like yeah. shit, they something. talk about Madonna when she was younger and her appetite and how she was just going to stop at nothing 
to get what she had to get. Yeah. To the point where she was, I mean, Dude, greatness requires a lot of sacrifices. And, yeah. and, and a lot of times those balls. sacrifices, yes. Insane. Can you imagine being a, a young girl from the Midwest and just being like, I want to be an entertainer and being 18 and going to Manhattan in the late 70s yeah. and just knowing no one with no money and being like, yeah. here I am, New York. Yeah. Like Madonna's nuts in that fashion. You know, it's it's super admirable, but yeah, that's another good example. You gotta you gotta be a little off. You can't. You're gonna be a little the, well, the, the story off, I heard about, or I, I would say different. Yeah. You're gonna be yeah. a little different than the rest of society. The story I heard about Madonna, and I don't know if it's true, and I but but it makes some sense. Was that because the money was scarce at one point when she was very young? They said Madonna was the kind of person they knew that, and the girl said she saw her do this was the kind of girl this guy ate a Big Mac and just kind of took two bites of it and put it in the trash. And Madonna was like, she basically was like, food and worrying about where I get, they were arguing about where they were going to get their next food. She goes, that doesn't fucking worry me. Watch this and grab the, the burger and ate it out of the trash. Now, I don't know the story. I don't know the exact thing, but the bottom line was she was just willing to stop at nothing. And if you were going to talk to her about how you're going to eat, I'll eat out of the fucking trash can, until but I'm it. until I make it. Yeah, and I'm gonna get this done. especially yeah. at her level. Yeah, and 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 which and I can an, believe. When you and see an Madonna, obsession in your craft yeah. too. You know, I mean, I Billy Joel uh, was doing that. He did a like a round table with Stern, and I remember him talking about. You know, he's Billy fucking Joel. He's already, you know, established himself. He's already wealthier than uh, all get out, and he says now, even to this day, he'll start playing the piano in the morning, and the next thing you know, it's like dark outside. You know, yeah. so he's just obsessive. Dude, well, you know, Tim Tebow's the same way. That obsessive gene or whatever that trait. Tim, at the time, there was no NFL, t- no NFL team calling or nothing, and we were doing an appearance in uh, Vegas. We got off the plane at freaking, I don't know, man, probably like midnight. He goes straight from the plane to the workout room. And I'm like, Dude, you have nothing come. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that he went from the plane to the workout room. Did one of the hardest workouts I've ever seen. Went to sleep, woke up at 6 a.m., did another workout, and then went to our parents. Very swole. It, 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 in, in, in crazy shape. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? S- Why? Sumner Redstone, who owns Viacom. You know, Viacom, like yeah, the biggest. Huge. Yeah. Little Sumner little Redstone company. owns Viacom. Um, Sumner company. Redstone was in a fire. There was a fire in a hotel in London. And Sumner Redstone hung from the ledge of the hotel. Uh, and he hung for a half hour. And by the time they rescued him, he was hanging from one hand. And if you see Sumner Redstone, Sumner Redstone can't use that hand anymore. So manly. That hand is all fucked up. It's a claw. And everybody who knew Sumner Redstone, I know guys who've, who've had to deal with him, everybody who knew Sumner Redstone said, uh, yeah, that makes, oh, yeah. If there's That's one him, guy yeah. who's superhuman who could, hang, it was not, it's not like he's in great shape. If there's one guy who could hang for a half hour, think about that off a ledge so he, he didn't want to die, it would be Sumner Redstone. Mine never matter where his hand got destroyed from doing that. You know, it's, it's those kind of people that are just that willing to do the most. My things. wife had a home birth. And that That's was gangster. That was kind Whoa, of like that in that, gangster. that was in that department for me where I was like, my wife's not. Uh, Phil Heath you know like her body's not prepared to go to you know like a lab and be studied for muscles and pa- and I watched with no drugs her do that for 25 Dude, hours and I was like gangster oh my you god I, I mean out of out of in my bed my I saw my child's eyes for the first time sheets in the bed I fucked. sleep in damn yeah sheets are fucked oh yeah you throw those out oh, okay. yeah. you throw everything out. and then I and then I ate the placenta did you? I did. You my wife and I. Makes me feel sick. I know. What'd you guys do? Cook it? I, I I was the only one who cooked it, but she would have it in a smoothie for Sauteed like a, for like a week. Yeah. That is just yeah. That's very hippie. Not, it was not fucking gross not and and not and utterly What's useless. What's utterly point? useless. Uh, I believe like a lot of hippie people believe there's like so some. It's what it. because you know why? Because animals do it. Yeah. So a dog will eat the placenta immediately. When I get it. We're humans, though, aren't we? Uh, let's Dogs eat to... garbage. You know, like <laughs> and yeah. shit. Yeah. And shit. Dogs and eat shit. Poop. Hey guys, um, before we jump into current events, Cal, let's do a little drop in knowledge. Let's we do a little drop in loads. <laughs> oh, sorry. We do a segment now called dropping knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to just quickly say someone had a good point. You're dropping knowledge. You mean New York Times? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I get it from the you Times. Mean, we should just call it New York Times. With I get it from the New York Down. Times. I get it from the BBC, and I get it from uh, Ted, or I get it from you know what have you. Uh, very quickly about about uh, people who are really great at, at things. 
uh, the guy who created Uber, can't remember his name, Tim Ferriss on his podcast talking about the guy who was, you know, created Uber. And they said, oh, well, anybody who knew him knew how competitive he was. He was playing Wii tennis with this big time venture capitalist dad who was a really good Wii tennis player. And uh, he was beating him like really, he was be the guy was good and he was beating him, the guy who owns Uber, I don't know his name. He was beating- Alice, him. it's Uber Alice. Yeah, <laughs> right. He was beating, uh, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. He was beating, he was beating him like really easily. And he goes, what's going on? And he goes, uh, hey, man, I should be honest with you. I've been using my left hand. And the guy, venture capitalist dad's like, what? And he goes, here you go. And he uses his right hand and didn't get, the guy didn't get a point. And this guy plays Wii Tennis, didn't get a point off the guy who created Uber. And then he goes, yeah, I should be come clean. And he brought him over to the, the world score belt board on Wii Tennis. And he was number two in the world. But that, is that... And like I'm almost, that almost brings you down in my eyes. It's eye. weird. Yeah. That makes it's, him a loser. It's just, yeah. well, whatever. Hey, let's play Wii Tennis. What oh, I play it 24 7. Apparently, I'm going to whoop your ass. Anything that he does, anything dumbass. he does, he though, apparently, best, yeah. he's like, there's no such thing as being just a player of Wii Tennis. He's going to be the best in the world. I'm the best at receiving oral in the world. Go. I'm uh, the there best at receiving. Yeah. So let This me makes that Uber guy a loser. Yeah. So he plays a ton of video games. Well, just one, I guess. And when he does it, he's the best in the world. Kind of weird. We tennis. Anyway, um, here is um, uh, from the New York Times, in fact. Um, I said that uh, recently that 400 families donated half the money to all the candidates uh, in the campaign. Correct. It's actually 178 families, so according to the you. front. No, it's the front page of the New York Times. Oh, wow. Well which is way less, especially on the Republican side, but both sides. 178 families are donating, and what that means because of Citizens United, which is the super PACs, the ability to give that much money, an unlimited amount of money if you create a political action committee, um, is it, we just have to, it, it's really something that's that, serious, That's the drop of knowledge that- Yeah, um, I was just, well, I had a couple, but I think that that's important to reiterate because, and, and just really quickly, just so you guys know, it's no one on both sides is really talking about that issue about campaign finance. And well, because neither finance. side can afford to lose exactly. the campaign. No, yeah, you can't say anything otherwise yeah. they pull exactly. the funding. Why Bernie Sanders they? talks about it a little bit. Donald Trump talks about it a little bit. But that's kind of crazy that we are being controlled by people who are that wealthy. Now, that to be powerful. fair, a lot of those families are self-made. A lot of those families are not trying. They've already made their money. They're right. not, and a lot of them just are trying to influence the political process because they're trying to make the world a better place. Uh, it's not like really? these cabals of, I'm going to make more money now for me. But that has to be a discussion. It's not ever been talked about. It, it is crazy. And then you think about, like, well, where does that money go if the candidate loses? Like, it just goes in the ethos? Most of them lose. Yeah. yeah. The, bigger, the bigger question is where does it go if the candidate wins? Yeah. So if if the candidate wins, now you're kind of, you've got to, as a human being, you, you're going to take that guy's call first. Bro, think how much money it takes to run for presidency. Yeah. It's insane. It's, it's yeah. alarming. To even yeah. step in the game, I was reading the statistics. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. So I don't know the answer. I just think it's important to talk about and know. And I don't think that's a very positive trend. There I, I should be a fist fight portion. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you like to know that at least... I'll take Trump. Oh, I don't think so. Who are you going to take? Probably Jeb. No. Uh, Jeb is a big boy. Way. Jeb's a big boy, but... He's a big sissy. Think how he was yeah. raised. No. Well, I know, Ooh, but I'll, what about George W. You New remember Jersey. George Chris W. Christie. Bush? Yes. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. He's kind of gangster. Down. He's kind of Yeah, but he'd get tired super fast. I don't care. He's yeah, face I, fast listen, fast. I ain't taking... After watching the Democratic... Uh, debates last night. I'm not taking anybody on that side. Bernie's gonna fight. die any Bernie second. Bernie will keel over and He's die. He's gonna yeah. die any second. Yeah. yeah. Don't vote him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, yeah. I don't know. Hillary probably is um, like a Ooh, scrappy, scrappy, scrappy chick. She's, yeah. She looks like type chick to bite your dick off. Yeah. She's a scrappy, and she's cheat. She's a cheater, probably. And with those thighs, can you imagine a triangle? She locks it up. Just fucking, oh, your head pops yeah. off. She's got oh, some dude. big ankles. She'll rip your dick off. Yeah. She's tough. Yeah, before we jump to current events, uh, you've been looking pretty healthy, man. You've been eating a lot. What's going on you know, here? Buddy, it's interesting, The man. thing is, buddy, I eat. What, I, what I'm what i about is gourmet meals because I'm a foodie. You like good food. I Quality. Got, yeah. Quality I've got my, my taste buds are, are very refined. I'm a bit of an aristocrat. We know this. Mm. <laughs> so, so like, a lot of times uh, what I'll do is I'll say, hey, you know what I feel like having? I, I feel like having some chicken thighs with caramelized fennel. And onions and roasted cherry tomatoes. Or sometimes I'll just say, how about I get some salmon with apple, hazelnut, and Brussels sprout salad? 
You know, I'll say stuff like that. You do say that all the time. (laughs) I'm like, where are we going to get this? There's no restaurant out there with all these stuff. Well, yeah. Especially good stuff. Right. Or how about seared pork chops with roasted apple, sweet potato, and Brussels sprouts? You tell me you eat like this at home? I do it. I do it for less than $10 a meal, Brennan. What? You can close your mouth right now because you're super surprised right now. Yeah, my mouth is watering. I know. And I'll tell you (laughs) something, buddy. It's because I get... I get that food delivered to my doorstep. What? I know. And you know how I do it? And I don't have to waste any food because I can just cook it with a step-by-step diagram. It's quite tough to cook, though. It's like all complicated. You think? I need to hire Wolfgang Puck to do this shit. <laughs> Brendan, I'm glad you brought that up. In fact, no. I, I get um, <laughs> pictures. I get a step-by-step picture diagram that how easy, to do it. Huh? that's right and all the ingredients are parceled out for me what is this place i have blue to know blueapron.com you dummy blueapron.com yeah that's right you're a dummy a dummy now yeah you dummy you dumb dumb <laughs> blueapron.com they come to my doorstep and mm, mm, what if i want to mm. di- what if i want two f- meals <laughs> what if i want to try it what if i just want to try it? just go to blueapron.com Probably something like promo code fighter. Yeah. That's what it is, Cal. Is that what it is? It seems like you've forgotten. You order it all the time. The promo code's fighter. It's promo blueapron.com co- promo code fighter. Evan the Beard, what do you got for current events? <laughs> First current event we got comes from a place Cal's very familiar with, the comedy store in West Hollywood. Guy got shot to death outside of there last night. There were six shots I read. I believe died in my friend Josh Nasser's arms Jesus. last night. Yep. And I was just with Josh last night at the at the improv was going to go to the comedy store. So did you hang out there? I was about, yeah. And I was at the, at the improv and I was driving toward the comedy store. Did you hear about this? Um, I I didn't hear about it until I sat down with you guys. At the exact time. And, uh, and then didn't, uh, met some friends. Yeah. You weren't there, but yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. That. Yeah, man. It's just one of those crazy things. I guess do we the know? Guy, do, is there any more info? I think he's still do, at do large. Do we know why the guy did it? Because he fired six shots randomly, or is this a hit? Five to seven shots are being reported as having been fired. Uh, seemingly completely random. Guy Fuck in a sweatshirt man. just rolled up. And then ran uh, off. Shot a guy in the chest. One guy. And bailed. And just died. Oh. And, it's you know, scary. I hang out that there. I hang out yeah. there. No, no motive known yet. I hang there probably, yes. you know, a lot of times, you know, four nights a week. Right Everyone, there. Everyone. I right mean, there. there's a ton. All, You've been there. You've been there. All our friends are You've been there tons Rogan's of times. Rogan's there all yeah. the time. You're there. Dalia's there. All the time. All our friends are there. All the so time. So when I woke up this morning and saw it, I'm like, what the fuck? It's really It's awful. scary, man. It is. How do you stop these random shootings? I don't know. I don't. I, 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 I just don't think that human beings were made to be around six billion others. I just think that your yeah. I think your brain, like your ability to kind of have any appreciation for human life just gets so diluted because we are probably designed to be around like a hundred people our entire lives. Small town. And, the, and it's like living in a place like, uh, like on sunset strip where the store is. It's just, you, there's just, you don't nine, even nine Americans die a day on average from, from gun violence. How now many? You have, nine. You have to be nine. Kicked. Yes. Nine. Way more than that. No, a day, a day. Way and more you have than to be that. Uh, not according to what Hillary Clinton said. in the Oh debates. no, it's Maybe way more than nine deaths. No, oh. Chicago alone. I saw. Statistics. Well, yeah, but, they, but that's, that's averaged yeah. out. Hillary, I mean, Hillary, there's days Hillary in Chicago. Clinton said in the debates, I, I may be wrong, but that's what she said. And it doesn't, it, 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 if it may, it's if it is wronger, bottom line is that I think, I, I think that I own guns and, um, I'm not I, I, I think that the biggest issue is this is the fact that background checks are not there are a lot of loopholes holes to background checks and I think most of us agree that if you have been hospitalized uh, or or have psychiatric problems and have been proven by medical professionals to be a threat to others at times or at one point, I don't think you should be able to get a gun. Yeah, that still doesn't stop. Like, I think this was a young kid and it was random. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, mm. they might have been bullied during their basement. Well, they and also, like outcasts, I don't so they know. Do this. I, I like show. to cite this all the time because the gun debate is going to go on forever yeah, and right. it ha- it's really Until heated right now. But, uh, you know, back in my, my partying days, I used to hang with dudes that use guns for crimes all the time. Uh, some of them were murderers and they shot yeah. people and they had got, uh, they shot people constantly um not one of them had a legally obtained gun you know and and the 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 streets of detroit chicago dc la the the people who are make it a point to commit crime with guns most likely are not buying i think what we're talking about is mass like for what i worry about is mass shooters and every time i hear when when you hear the republican or the nra side you know, they'll say things like, if everybody had a gun, that guy would have been taken out. The problem with that thinking, and I, and I, in some ways, I 
kind of agree. Yeah. I'd like to keep a gun on me in case. Yeah, however, case. however, um, I think every problem has a solution, and um, and I don't think it has to be. We're going to take all your guns away. I do think that if you can buy guns legally on the internet, and there are those loopholes, right. and I don't know all the details, I think there are psyche, psychi- there are people who are not stable mentally who have gotten a hold of guns, and a lot of them legally, and went on to shoot a lot of people. There's got to be a way to deal with that, well, whether it's outpatient care, yeah. whether it's having background checks for I don't know everyone. how you stop these random... Well, that's one white dudes who are just like, that's one way. It is one way. way. What they've done with like Percocet and uh, Vicodin and things is, you know, in the last five years, the medical community has gone to overhaul it as best they can. And and there's still a long way to go, but they've done a great job. There's now a database of every legally prescribed opiate based painkiller in this country and the people who get it, the amount they were prescribed. So, you know, so every pill is accounted for. So when people are using them, illegally or outside of their prescription or they become at red flags. they can't yeah and there's red flags and every yeah. pharmacist knows and then they can see which pharmacist is bleeding out these pills oh, into nice. the black market and maybe that's the the solution well, also, that's also remember I don't, I don't i don't think there is a solution yeah i know that sounds I, I dark. Do. i don't think there is i do I think okay there's take away guns good luck you no know, it's not that it's not that it's, it's it's limiting the damage so for example like um when you say illegally obtain handguns mm-hmm. a lot of studies have pointed to the fact that the the illegally obtained handguns sometimes can be from just a handful of brokers of gun brokers mm-hmm. uh there are certain there are there are a handful of channels to that going to gun shows and being a second secondary buyer and then selling to other people. There are ways to at least put um, a, 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 a check on that, it? a check on that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and I think, I think that the, I, I don't, my problem is that every time we have this terrible thing, like in Oregon, mm-hmm. um, in a school and all of us kind of shrug our heads and uh, shrug our shoulders and go, well, that's just the way it is. Shit happens. No, <laughs> right. No, man. I, I think there's gotta be a way to do it. That doesn't infringe on our second amendment rights. And and if you guys are gun, there are a lot of gun advocates. I, I'd like to hear from you actually. Email and give me some some a point of view on this because it, I know it's a complicated thing and I know it's a touchy subject. And as a guy who owns guns himself, you know I I am as confused sometimes about this as well. And I don't have the answers. But I do think I do think that crazy people like the guy who shot up the movie theater in Aurora in Denver, right, right, yeah. yeah, that guy was psychiatric was psychiatrically totally unstable. That guy shouldn't be able to get not only a gun, but a gun with a hundred round drum right. that attaches to it. Uh, there's something going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, there. Fuck you do. I think, it's, right? it's really, it, there has to be some middle ground where there's at least a step in the right direction. It's just there. Yeah. It's when there's so many people and so many drugs, so many guns, and like, I always get really angry when people from other countries go, well, in my, you know, I'm from Germany and this doesn't happen ever. And there's just as many. And I go, you don't have Americans there. It's just not the same. Yeah. You can't yeah. fucking it's compare. Frontier mentality. Yeah. You cannot. It's, it's like yeah, we're man. wacky cowboys. Yeah. And but conversely, just, yeah. conversely, I don't think arming teachers, you know, you know, right. as a fighter, you don't want a military you know state, as a fighter, yeah. like it takes years in a day, in an emergency situation. Like you talk to, like I've talked to guys who've been in firefights in the military. And the one thing they always say is, dude, it happens so quickly and you train. Even the train ones. The, even the up. train they ones freeze fuck up. up. When yeah. The bullets are flying for reals. You They're so up. loud. Pat, Pat and you're Tillman a, was you, killed by friendly fire. I mean, like yeah. it, there you it, go. it happens. Mista- yeah. You're fi- talking about a firefight with right. guns and bullets. And you're same a, paintball. We have no experience. Yeah. You can, you can play all the video games or simulators you want or yeah. train for it. But until the bullets are actually flying, we don't know how you're going to respond. Right. Same thing with fighting. And a, a woman who's football. teaching children or whatever, that's her main focus. And you come in, some badass dude comes in with camel, boom, boom, starts blowing people's heads off. Uh, really? How do you inoculate somebody to that stress? How do you sink to the level of your training? You're you right. want to put teachers through that level of training? That's Navy SEAL shit. What about, what if we hire security guards everywhere? Yeah, but that, that the other the, issue the, with that might, might be that, the hey, training? I'm going to shoot the security guard. So, they, so now the guy knows exactly what to do. I'm going to plan this out. I'm going to shoot the security guard in the head and then I'm going to go kill everybody is, else. Is the well, going to have an answer? Do we just take do we take yeah. guns out of the situ- out of the argument and then just say let's make less fucked up people? There you go. That well, that's the, that to me go. that to me sounds like the best answer. And the the truth be told and like people don't like to say this but I I'm remodeling my house. My wife and I remodel it. I had to get eight friggin' permits and talk to 20 different government executives just to have a right. hedge that was over eight feet tall yeah. and, a, and a fence had to be at least three feet away from it. 
but you can have a baby anytime you want with any random person that you just met at a bar. <laughs> yeah, and when kids who come from, Preach. you know, like really uh, unstable homes have more kids as kids, then you're making fucked up people, you know? And yeah. I, that's I a good just, point, Mike. I feel like. And, and, and also getting them the help. Like, so, so let, here's my question to you guys. And we live in a free society, but you know, nowadays, if somebody is psychiatrically unstable, and even if a psychiatrist says, look, I've been around this for a long time, yeah. this guy's kind of becoming, this guy strikes He's me as issue, a, yeah. a danger, a threat to society. Right. You actually, to try to get mandate that that person take their drugs is really tricky. Yeah. It's dicey. Or even mandate that the, the cops come and, and cuff the guy. Yeah. You know, which what? if, you know, if, crazy? if that kid in Aurora, the, 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 a movie theater shooter a piece of shit. if he he goes into his shrink or his therapist uh the week before and says i'm really having homicidal thoughts and i'm i'm there's nothing legally that can be done right now, so, he so, still so, goes yeah. home at night yeah. right it's so insane. so then the question becomes should we have it's tricky because, which is crazy by the way sorry to interrupt yeah. which is crazy because if you say i'm having suicidal thoughts you're, you're you go you to a 24 you get 5150 yeah, there you go man. you know there you go but it now i'm having weird. homicidal thoughts well, you have to it, forcing somebody to take their medication. Well, look, how about this? Let me jump to this. If you are in the, in the Centers for Disease Control, if you are if you have tuberculosis, you are mandated to take a six to nine month regimen of antibiotics. You have to do it, right? Because you're a threat to society. You can't walk around Disease, yeah. carrying tuberculosis. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're quarantined, or you have you must go on your antibiotics. And my buddy had it. You have to report. Uh, I think once a week or every day, whatever it is, and take your medicine. And that's mandated by the Center for Disease Control. And I think all of us go, yeah, I don't want a dude walking around with tuberculosis. My kid could get it or whatever. I could get well, it. Well, it sounds like we're know. just not taking mental health seriously. Like we go. should be. They should have to yeah. check in. Maybe they get parole officers like the criminals. I also think that there's still, there's still such a tremendous, A, misunderstanding, and B, a taboo around the idea of mental health. Yeah. People do not look at addiction, uh, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia. They don't equate it to cancer or diabetes. And it is the same. You have Your brain is an organ, and sometimes it has it's diseases, just yeah. like your heart does, just like your liver sure. does. But people in this country, by and large, there's don't want to look at it that way. We don't, we don't, yeah, we don't understand it yeah, yet. We don't, there's a lot we don't understand. But I also think people chalk up the any shooting uh mental disorder yeah sometimes i just think people are bad they're evil people. they're evil yeah. people but they're oftentimes people. oftentimes they're evil of, people and they're mentally ill yeah. it doesn't mean they're they're absolved of what they did true but you know somewhere down the line by tweaking a couple things in your brain maybe something could have been done but then but then there are people i think that I think there's just bad there's no, like a guy who at age 13 recognizes he likes fucking kids and wants to fuck kids He's going to either go to jail or fuck kids. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I that's so I don't know because that's certainly a mental illness, but at the same time, like, what do you do? You know, you can't you're not gonna give a guy a pill that makes him not want to have sex with children. We don't you know? have not now. Problem. We yeah. don't have it now, but certainly certainly I don't want him I don't want him near kids. What about yeah, this know? like like these Oculus like alternate reality? I was thinking about it like for me, there's nothing I love more than Smoking cocaine and drinking whiskey. That's the best really? thing. Really? That's in number the one for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Number <be> <laughs> Smoking ah, crack? Holy yeah. shit. Crack. It's the best thing in the world. Really? And You're the second person who's told me that. And I love it so much. much yet, I can't do it. It destroys my life. What if I could go in this alternate reality that made me feel like I was smoking crack, but I wasn't, mm. and so no one gets harmed? What if you could go into like o Oculus World and feel like you're having sex with a 13-year-old? Yeah. But you don't, and no yeah. kids get but harmed. It it's a great that, question, that man. Need. Like, is that you can the have next... a virtual experience? Yeah, that doesn't hurt anybody. And by the way, I got to tell you, I would one hundred percent endorse that I because I want you fucking. I want you fucking a hologram. Yeah, not a real child. Because I don't. I, I don't know any <laughs> pedophiles. I don't know. I don't. I've never sat down or talked to them. But from what I know, like know from them. TV, yeah, exactly. But like, if you watch To Catch a Predator or you watch any of these shows, the documentary shows, they all know it's wrong. They, you know, like it's I knew, it was, I knew it was wrong to steal from my parents to go buy blow, but I, I was not going to stop. You want to, you know, so like, I, I wonder, you know, if yeah. that's a, I think that's very, you're bringing up a really, really important point, which is the fact that we're starting to it. find that pedophiles may very well, it may very well be neurological. A, a large percentage of uh, pedophiles are left-handed, yeah. which is really weird. 
And so that points, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this is something that happens. Serial killers too, right? They a have different brains a lot of times. Fucking southpaws. Well, they paws. have different brains. They, a lot of times they're, they're, <laughs> they're amyg- amygdala is less developed in some cases, whatever. I mean, they do. They will tell you that a lot of serial killers have different brains. So I don't know, man. We'll be on here all day. What else you got, Ev? All right. Next one, we've got um, we've got a story coming out of Las Vegas, specifically from uh, what is it called? The the Love Ranch in Las mm-hmm. Vegas. It's like the Bunny Ranch, right? Yeah, it's like the Bunny. Yeah, yeah it's owned a by the, owned it's by the a, same guy, I believe. All right, Dennis Hoff. Yeah. It Not is a brothel in Las Vegas, and they found Lamar Odom there, unconscious and unresponsive. He's been taken to the hospital. Oh, Reports say that he suffered multiple strokes. Very well may not make it, and if he does, he ain't gonna be the same. Fuck, man, it's heartbreaking. It is, but he's he's, he's been battled on this addiction. He's battled addiction spiral, for a long right? time. Yeah. Well, I, I know he comes. From, well, if he, I think his mom or his dad, and I think his dad still is an is an addict, and so uh, I think you know a little more about his background. And so he it's he a lot of a lot of he's murder so in his family, and then he had he had a child die uh, of SIDS. Like his, his two not best, too, not too long ago. This, yeah. his, his two very closest friends died this past oh, year were murdered. Damn his it, two man. best friends. And then the thing that was kind of holding everything together is he had the support from the Kardashians. You talk all the shit you want about the Kardashians. However, he felt like he had a family with yeah. Khloe Kardashian. Then that goes down the drain. Yeah. And so then he's just had this crazy spiral down. And then now, from what I hear, it doesn't sound like he's going to make it out of this, man. Here's my question. Fuck. And uh, I, I, I wish nothing but the best for the soul of Lamar Odom and certainly for his family. But do you think, because these hookers, uh, these prostitutes, they called ambulance immediately and the whole like love ranch, they stepped into action like on the spot and they, you know, airlifted sure. him out. Do you think that Lamar Odom would have ever been taken to a hospital if they were working in an area where prostitution was like illegal? LA, if they were in L.A.? In if he hotel? had ordered some escorts at the, at the Marriott, you know? Interesting question. They no might have, way. They might He'd be rotting away. right now in a, in a hotel room somewhere on the Sunset, uh, Sunset Boulevard. That's what I'm saying. Legalized prostitution. I, I agree with you 100% on I that. I agree 100%. Can't believe it's illegal. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'll tell you what's crazy is if, uh, you know, every morning I watch Fox Sports or ESPN and Sports Center, and you see the type of dude that Lamar Odom was because every single person in the NBA, any face who's ever had a connection with Lamar mm-hmm. Odom is tweeting out or reaching He's out. He's a great to guy. Matt He's Money, just a good dude. Matt Money Smith uh, from the Petros Money Show on uh, Fox Sports Radio, he used to be the sports guy for. Uh, Kevin and Bean, okay. and uh, so I, I I grew up working at K Rock with with Matt, and he when he transferred over to Fox Sports at five seventy here in L A, that was the the Laker station at the time, and so he had he was in the locker room, he was hanging out with the guys, and I was I would always you know a huge Laker fan, so I'd always ask him about and he and he said without question without not even a close second Lamar Odom's the best guy on the team, he's God, the nicest guy, he's says. just a sweet a human bummer, being. Man. It's it's heartbreaking. It's yeah. heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Was his was it heroin? That's his thing. Uh, they say he has track marks, but I I know that initially he was a stimulant. He liked to smoke uh, smoke rock, but they said you know reports are that there was track marks. And that I, I will say that towards the end of my use, when I started uh, mixing heroin in with crack, when I started smoking speedballs, I started going to the hospital weekly. Really? I was getting really? I was overdosing like that. Why? Because uh, it's it's it, your it go, your heart doesn't know something, what to do. Something about the the way it hits your body, like what a fucking speedballs. Bummer, speedballs man. for some reason. I used to definitely have the moments all the time where I dial when I was just smoking rock, where I'd be dialing nine one and be like, out. I'd be like, dude, should I? Should I? My heart's racing, and you know, I'd w- want to get help, but I never did. As soon as I started smoking speedballs when I moved to the to the East Coast, I was I was overdosing. All the time. What, what would happen to you? I just wake. I'd Did start. I'd start out? feeling like it's. You know what it feels like. And this is why I hate it so much. It feels like getting choked out. Really. When you don't tap and and like. But there's nothing. You, you, you kind of just you feel like something's coming on, but you don't realize. It, and then next mm-hmm. thing you know, you wake up and you're like in a different place. And, Pants off. Yeah. And sometimes hurts. I would I would pee myself a lot. Wow. Like I would notice when I. When that's I would that's overdose. low. That's that's. You know, you're such a good guy. We all, I like every time I see you. I, I feel like things are right in the world. But you've been through some. So You've been sure. through the fire, brother. I, I get, yeah, I have, as but at the same time, a lot of it's self-chosen, you know. And I, yeah. I when I look at like um uh people, and and I'm not trying to minimize a struggle. I mean, everybody's, you know, everyone has their 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 struggles. But you know, I I take into consideration that I I certainly allowed it to get to that level because I had recognized 
that I had a problem long before that. I had two vain attempts at trying to get clean before I actually Were you trying, clean. but usually drug use and that numbing pain is trying to fill a void. Were you trying to fill a void or were you unhappy with life? Like, yeah, like, oh yeah, I, I no. think Lamar Odom has, has so much loss, yeah. so much pain that he's turned down this dark, dark road. I definitely had, no, like I, I would not have been disappointed if one of those times that I, uh, that I overdosed, I didn't make it. Why? I was, I was at a, I just didn't really, it wasn't like, oh, you know, I was, I had, you know, such a terrible life. It's just that I really didn't have anything positive. You, you know, I, I, I was a, I was a near straight F student in high school. I, I always, you know, I, I was a good athlete, but I wasn't like anything that would have gone to like a college to yeah. play. And, uh, and I graduated high school and I, I didn't really see myself being someone who would make it quote unquote, you know, like go to a, a good college and yeah. get a job as an accountant or, you know, in the traditional American way, lawyer, doctor, whatever. Um, and I, and, uh, I already was very addicted to drugs and alcohol. I mean, hope I was drinking for breakfast and uh, I was already at that point. So I was like, well, really, what's the, what's the end game here? The, let's just so ride this you out. Thought you had no reason to live. Right, right. But you still, I mean, you know, you're a good looking dude. Mm, so thank you, you wake up with that. You know, yeah, but I, but I, but I, but like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, I was not, I was not a guy who wanted to go out and hit the clubs and the bars and party. I was very reclusive. So, I mean, it didn't even, that didn't pay off so when you see way. lamar odin you, it must affect you you must know exactly it's where he's going there's in. yeah i mean the, it's it's <clears throat> such a like a, like a gut-wrenching pain when you feel when you see someone uh celebrity or not that dies from the disease of addiction because people oftentimes until it's too late neglect to remember that the disease of addiction is a fatal disease and you can't get out of it it's a fatal disease yeah that's the disease never, of addiction is a fatal disease. You're, you're an addict your entire life. Yes, it's and I. No it's practice. exactly like diabetes. Diabetes is a fatal disease unless you control it. I, if I were to go and have a uh, glass of wine with it's Brian hard. at dinner, uh, within weeks I'd be back into the. To, I'd be redlining. You know. Right, and within weeks, so you can't even. You can't dip your toe into those waters. I know I can't. I know. I, and 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 that to people who aren't addicts or alcoholics, that sounds insane. It no, sounds yeah. crazy, like the idea that Slipper you go slope. 13 years without touching any mood-altering substances and that you can't go have a glass of wine. I've done it before. I went a year and a half of being clean my last time prior to this in 2000, and uh, I thought the same thing. I was a young kid. I was like, I went a year. Yeah. I went over a year, yeah. man. I'm fine. And uh, I remember I went out to sushi with my friends, and I just had some sake. And and that night, I was fine. Yeah. Next day, I was like, well, I'll have another drink. And um, like yeah. three weeks later, I was uh, I was in a hotel in Inglewood. Is that why he's waiting for a, waiting for a dealer to come by? God, and get, yeah. Is that why they say zero that, to hundred? I know. Is that why they say like if you're a bet gambler? Like I I want I sat in on two gambler gamblers anonymous meetings because mm -hmm. I was trying to write this play on it, dude. That's I, a desperate. Oh world. my wow. god, the wow. gamblers have. There was a guy who was holding his shirt. And he was going, um, he was talking, he goes, so I had some urges because I walked by two of the places I go to uh, today, but um, I, I'm here. And I was like, oh, this guy's jonesing to gamp. Like, and so those guys were talking about also how they don't, they, don't, they also don't drink or do anything. Right. Tip, I was going to say, you, there's not a lot of crossover with um, gamblers, gamblers uh, and, Whoa, and drinkers. And addicts and, drink. and addicts, correct? Uh, um, Gambling's um, real. Though. A lot of times you'll oh, see yeah. sex addicts and, and drug addicts and alcoholics, they'll, they yes. run in the same crowd. Very rarely are gamblers have, have a crossover. That makes sense. Yeah. What is the sex addiction? Is that real? Do you think? With oh the, yeah. Like I met I met guys. Oh, who, the struggle I met, is real. I met oh, guys who. Uh, yeah, you're talking about a, 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 a fellow pervert here. I understand. And we all love sex. We all love pussy. We all we all love porn. But, we all. Love, but, but give me an example. I've met guys who. Um, I've met guys who have. Uh, put their daughter to sleep, you know, put their kids to sleep and then ordered hookers over to the house because they, and with their wife in the next room, they can't, they absolutely wow. can't stop. I've met guys who what? are super straight, but they couldn't like their, their escort services, they ran out of money. So they just go to glory holes in, in, uh, West Hollywood and stuff. I've met guys Whoa. who've made their dick bleed from jerking off. I mean, what? like okay. totally sober. Well, I thought I was a sex I mean, like, their sex addiction is a, is a real thing. That's a legit it triggers game. this pleasure center that they can't stop. Right. It's like the rat that keeps hitting the lever an until it dies. An addict, yeah. man, that's intense. And then they were talking about, do you, do you know anything about this? Like when, when they did that experiment with rats and the rats, you know, kept touching, kept mm -hmm. drinking the cocaine until they died. But then the guy turned the rat cage into like Disneyland for like rats. The playground, yeah. And they stopped doing the drugs. They just drank water because they had, they were fulfilled. Right. And so now they say that the biggest thing about with addicts is connection 
and changing your cage. I, I, Is that I, true? I think? definitely think that, you know, you're going to have the predisposed, you know, the, the genetic connection to the disease no matter what. But it's trauma that manifests it. You know, there's plenty yeah. of people I've met in meetings that didn't start drinking till they were in their 50s and went to college, had parties, you know, yeah. got drunk in Never college. An and then it was it wasn't until their 50s that they they went off the deep end. Really? And it, it's wow. because, you know, it's it's some form of trauma that eventually forces it to manifest or to manifest in a precipitous so, so are you fashion. born an addict and then something brings it out like you're saying yeah yeah benefits? yeah so i mean addicts are born it's and like, i was i was you know i was sexually abused and i had you know certainly had my trauma in the household outside of the oh, sexual you, abuse you did, sexual abuse. abuse did not exist in my my home of origin but i had trauma in my home and and i come from a long family uh, a long family history of alcoholism i, I mean you know pre yeah. i'm mexican irish right down the middle first oh, generation on oh, both sides oh, oh. and uh you know perfect story yeah i mean i and um alcohol and, and so yeah i mean I, there was these little things that kind of that led to uh and uh and i always uh, on top of the addiction and, and the drinking and, and the and the drugs i look at also like little fears i have in my life and and relate them to the trauma that I like I, I had sex at a very young age with an older woman and although I was willing at the moment what's young I was summer before my eighth grade so 13 12 13, young, yeah. Yeah. and and she was 19 so hot. and uh so is this a point and I want going into it walking yeah. into that room I'm like this is the best thing that's ever gonna happen <laughs> and then when it when it went through I was so mortified by it I never told anybody even my closest buddies who were all disgusting pussy uh, yeah. drunk guys in eighth grade as well. Yeah. I didn't tell anybody about it until I was on Loveline. I was 30. Wow. I never opened up about it. Wow. And because it made me feel so fucking weird. I can't remember ever blowing a load, even up to that point. You know, I'd been jerking off for like two years. Even at that point, I can't remember ever f like blowing a load and then feeling so horrible. Like I was so confused There's and shame, shame ridden. To yeah. that shit. And what was she I see, like? And like I, I'm not like that big of a sexual animal, you know, and I think that that <laughs> relates to, you know, my feel like I never really go into a sexual situation, even if I'm way into a chick. Like I never really go into it feeling all that good. I'm always like, this is probably going to be weird and awkward and I'm going to feel because shameful. I think so. And then, and also that I got beat up bitch. really badly when I was like a freshman and uh, the dudes were holding my head uh, in water. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and Fuck, and uh, my mean. biggest my biggest fear is is still to this day is like the ocean and stuff. Like oh, I, yeah. I think I told you sense. last time I was on fire and the kid. Like I started surfing just to try to deal with that. Yeah. yeah. Because I'll go into Ellis Mania and go in with a with a professional Muay Thai fighter, and I'm sure I'm nervous. But I'll do that. I'll do, I'll yeah. do uh, try the a backflip on a. Forgiving. I'll try a backflip on a yeah. motorcycle, even though I don't know how to pop it into gear. For but sure. um. I try to get me to go walk in the ocean, even just you know, uh, oh, yeah. nipple deep, and I'm just I get I get she's yeah. she's an unforgiving mistress. Yeah, it's so. not even, it could be anything. Yeah, so Pools, I, I mean I, I'm not, not certainly not a professional. I'm not in any way qualified to make these assessments, but I do relate these kind of weird. Hundred you know, percent. What's Doctor Drew say about it? He, he definitely supports me on it. You know, well, but he's know. he's not a shrink either. So yeah, I, mean, I do. Genius. Yeah. Though. You know. But when you talk, yeah, he is. It's he's funny how when you start telling these stories about being young at thirteen with a nineteen year old, like I, you get like you get these memories. Like I remember being, I my family was in Saudi Arabia, and I'm in boarding school in Massachusetts because I couldn't go to school. They wouldn't allow anybody past the ninth grade to go to school in Saudi Arabia if you're a foreigner. Mm -hmm. I was in Riyadh. So I had to go away to school. So my family is in Saudi Arabia. I'm in Massachusetts. I've never lived in the United States Jesus. ever. I've never lived in the United States. I don't know anything. I didn't know what that part. Uh, in Northfield, Mount Hermon. Uh, it's Northfield, Massachusetts. Where, like, it's it's on the border of Vermont, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And I had never. I didn't even know how to address an envelope. I remember my friend yeah. said, "You don't know how to address an envelope." I'd never. I didn't grow up with American TV. The whole thing was a disaster, right? And there was this girl, my friend Daryl. And I, we've been hanging out with this girl with enormous, enormous tits. tits. Like the biggest things I've ever seen in my life. How old and are you right She was right not now? attractive. How old? <laughs> huh? Not attractive. She was how, not. How oh, I was 14. Okay. I was a 14-year-old prepubescent, you know, kid. I remember I was just getting hair on my wiener. I, I was a late bloomer, Don't guys. I was, like late, I was a late bloomer. bloomer. And she was big and she was not attractive. And she was, I believe, a senior. And she had enormous boobs. She's like Bigfoot with titties. I, her her nipples. I remember her nipples were as wide as they looked like small, like they were saucer Bigfoot nipples. With titties, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine Bigfoot Silva with Nicki Minaj's body. Yeah. 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 Minus the ass. And I remember we were in a field. I remember we were in a field, 
And <laughs> this is so funny. And she was kind of sitting with the, and she pulled out these giant heads. And my friend, she just pulled them out for you guys. Yes. Like, and my, hey boys. And my friend Daryl was like, my friend Daryl goes, I'm, <laughs> he goes, I'm, I'm going to suck them. <laughs> I'm going to suck them. And I was standing there. I was like, all right. Suck them. And he bro. goes like this. Hey, is Daryl black? Is Daryl black? Yes, yeah. he is. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh, a white guy named Daryl's and he goes, struggle. And, yeah, yeah. Daryl's. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember Darryl's watching weird. him just go, I remember him take these giant heads and he was like, he was going, he was so one of them. One of them. He was <laughs> sucking it. And I was sitting there going, well, I'm not going to suck that one. Yeah. I guess I'll suck the other one. She had two and so she goes, So she goes, do you want to suck this one? And I go, um, I'll, <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but I remember waiting till he was done because it was going to be weird. And then I didn't wait. And I remember he smelled like Old Spice, like cologne or something. Yeah. Like drenched, right? Like yeah. he had his underarm. I don't know what it was. And I remember <laughs> awkwardly going, hum, 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 hum. and now and bonus. now she goes, I kind of, she goes, no, because she goes, will you let me suck you off? I remember oh, suck you off. Dude, which I didn't know she's a champion. She's awesome. I know. And I Why don't you get her on Fighter and the Kid? <laughs> And Where are you, Bigfoot with titties? I know. And I, well, she wasn't very attractive. And I remember just- Who cares? I know. I'd love to talk to this woman. I was new in America, okay, 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 dude. Okay, okay. I didn't okay. know. So she asked to blow you. And my buddy goes, no. And I go, yeah, I'm good. No, I'm good. And she goes, well, I go, I, maybe I shouldn't do that. And she goes, well, I go, I don't know. I feel maybe I shouldn't. And I'm standing in the middle of the field. And I think I pulled out my willy. And I think she did it. And it didn't really get very hard. And then I put it back in my pants. And I went home and I was, She's I remember like, being, you and I'm not traumatized by really anything. Even at 14, nothing was going to get yeah. to me. I was a little, I was a little, I felt a little ashamed. It's intense. And guilty. Yeah. Like, it was intense. Like, I, I just didn't know what to, I didn't know how to deal with I, it. I never had really anything. Like I've never been molested, nothing like mm. that. The only time I remember anything that is vivid like that to me is I was at a summer camp at a YMCA and they used to make us <laughs> swim all the fucking time. Like, like, you know, middle of the day, swim. I used to fucking hate it. Me and yes. my brother hated it. My brother always had a horrible temper. And we're in there tra uh, changing. And my dick's out. And this kid comes by and slaps my dick. <laughs> like, slaps, grabs. Yeah. Sure, gay. Yeah, sure. Slaps kind of grab, like, sure. yanked on it. Sure. Like an elephant trunk. Like, honk. Yep. But it was, like, too much. Let me give you a little honk. It's yeah, called a passing honk. honk. Yeah. And we call it a passing we honk. Were, I'm know, just bewildered that you have enough dick meat that you could grab oh, yeah. and honk. Like, I, it, for him, it would be, like, Putting like grabbing a teacup no, this for me, kid had you know, a like he would come and go. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. No, this kid had a full. Think of like you know, like he had a, tiny just hands, a thick yeah, hog. little tiny, yeah, just like honk yeah. elephant. Yeah. Trunk. He grabbed big brown, and yeah, he grabbed little brown. And I remember thinking like, I was like, that's weird. But my brother was older, and he beat the fuck out of that kid. I mean, nice, I bet. Him. Yeah. It's like the guy taking a shower in Italy, and we're in the outdoor shower, and he's rubbing his body. And I looked down, and he's I'm like, that looks like half a hard on. And he goes, you ever dry hump? And I was like, oh, no, I'm not into that kind of stuff. <laughs> Dude, I, have to, I have to uh, go, boys. I have to do a, a radio show. Go do it. Anyway. got this, man. But uh, in, 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 in parting, I would like Brandon to read this. Or Brendan. Brendan, I said. I just have a weird uh, affect. People fucking yeah. about that. Um, this is from my friend Micah, a very gay man. For you to get me a picture of Brent. <laughs> so this guy takes him. Mike goes, Come on, man. Another chance for you to get me a picture of Brendan Schaub's dick. Don't let me down. <laughs> so I said, puts, I said, I, I will ask. ask. That's all I can do. You're so asking. I, yeah. Hey, Brendan, then, don't be a baby. Put, I know you got some little, on your phone. He puts a little meme of this. this Anna Kendrick. Anna mm. Kendrick going, really? And then the guy's dead serious. goes, what did he say? Wait, wait for it. Don't be a cock tease. The guy's dead Dude, serious. Dude, send him a picture of a giant dick. Black. I'm going to send it. I will Brown. send him because I have many on my phone. I will send him a picture of a giant black dick. <laughs> Good job. Okay. All and right. You got, and you have you're the best. Mike you're the best. Thank you, guys. I, I love being on the show. I love the show. Thank you so much. I know Thank you're you, busy brother. as shit, but let's all go to dinner, man. Yeah. You can come back on Loveline. Let's go to go. Let's go to eat and then go straight to Loveline. Don, you tell us when. All right, dude. All right, brother. You're the best, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Catherwood Psycho had to Mike exit Catherwood. the building. Yeah. A lot of lots going I was calling on. Catherwood. I meant Catherwood. Sometimes I'll call him Mick Catherwood. I don't know why. Catherwood. My God. Such a good dude. He's, such He's so dude. reliable, man. Whenever I take him, you do the show, yes, what time, what day. He's just so smart. He's just on it, man. Smart. I love and, that dude. And a good guy. Talk to him all the time. Good. We got to go on Loveline. Yeah, and we got to hang out with him more often. It's That's tough. a guy I want it's tough around. tough schedule, but for yeah. sure. But like you said, we'll go eat and then go do Loveline. I'll great. set up maybe next week. Um, what else you got? Let's wrap these current events up. 
Yep, we got one more. The uh, the Nick Diaz petition, the White House petition that was going around trying to get 100,000 signatures so the uh, the government would have to issue a response or some kind of statement on what's going on with Nick and his five-year ban. They needed like 17,000 signatures with like three days left. I don't know how they did it. Somehow managed to do it last night. Well, people just the, signed it, yeah. They're at a, they're like 110,000 Yeah, now. we retweeted it. Or that's I amazing. Retweeted it. That's yeah, amazing. it's great. But uh, and th- what's even what that's great, but what's even bigger is a guy like George St. Pierre is now sticking up for Nick Diaz, and he's saying how this is ridiculous and the ban should be lifted. So uh, this is the first step to, to doing things. I think people – this is kind of the first step in the fighters realizing we have some power. No matter what someone says, the fighters as a whole, if we all get together and do some shit – Things are going to get done. Yeah. So I think we'll see the ban on Nick Diaz get lifted. That's so great. That's a good thing. Hopefully. But for you fighters listening, this is a step in the right direction where if we put our brains together and we come together w- with one goal in mind, you can do some shit. It does not matter what the UFC or what the commission says. We have the power to change some shit. There you go. There's your blueprint. Brandon. Booyah. Brandon, you're being re- you're being incendiary right now. What no, are you I'm just to calling say? facts like they are. Uh, mm-hmm. Before we get into fan questions, which are going to be interesting because they're for Mike, so you might have to go through them, Special K, and change them. Kel, let me ask you something, man. Sure, buddy. You don't have a lot of time, just like Psycho Mike. Neither buddy, do I. Buddy, I'm, a, I'm as busy as it gets. I know, but you still- Nose see- to the grindstone. Nose to the grindstone. That's a big nose to hit to the ground. It is. But uh, you spent a lot of time waiting in the post office. Uh, you know, I, I, I when, when I want to mail something, um, I get in my car, I put my seatbelt on, I turn the car off, oh. I adjust my mirrors, I drive to the post office, I park, I get out. It takes time. I take my seatbelt off, I get out, I wait in line. We don't need Why? every What's detail, but it takes What's time. Because well, yes. listen, you can do it from your home. What? Yeah, man. Stamps.com brings all that post office. Shenanigans? shenanigans to your home right at your very own desk buy and print official u.s postage using your own computer wait, Brandon, and printer I stop you, I stop you, you post any I letter know, yeah but hold on i don't know package. how much it weighs dude i don't know how much it weighs i know man because right now if you sign up for stamps.com and use our promo code fighter you get a free special offer it's a four-week trial plus yeah. a hundred ten dollar bonus offer yeah, but i'm telling including you I need, I need to postage, weigh these things postage yeah, and i need to weigh these a things. digital scale what yeah you don't a have to worry about weighting. One? a digital one and so guess I know what exactly how heavy everything is for you guys that use uh tfatk.com to get all your firing the kid merchandise what do you think we use i don't know what stamps.com do do? that's how it gets to you so dang fast stamps.com use dang promo code fast. fighter don't wait stamps.com before you do anything else click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in fighter that's stamps.com enter Fighter! Get it dang fast. Get it dang fast. Get it dang fast. Dang dang. Dang dang. Don't get it fast. Get it dang fast. Dang dang. Fan questions. Fan questions. Fan questions. They were made for Mike, but Mike had to take off because we're some chatty Cathy's. We like to talk. Couple chatty Cathy's. Chatty chatty Cathy's. We are chatty Cathy's. Couple chatty chatty. Chatty Cathy's. A couple chatty chatty Cathy's. What do you got, Ev? Couple chatty Cathy's. Sorry. (laughs) All right. First fan question. Brennan, I know you're into fashion and make awesome tees. Have you ever thought about designing men's clothing? Yes. Uh, I have for you. Yeah, I mean, I guess if if an opportunity is brought to me from, you know, someone else who deals with all the manufacturing and the ins and outs where I didn't have to go seek out everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would collab with someone who already has the infrastructure to do it for sure. I love that stuff. I love fashion. You do, right? You just love it. Love it. Love it. So, yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Uh, Did Klopp get mad at you uh, for telling his broken dick story to millions of people on JRE? Yeah, he did. He did. I messed up because I was like, I'm not going to say his name. He's 66270. And everyone knows my only friend who's 66270 yeah. is Joe Kloppenstein. And a lot of people that we run in the same circle with knew exactly who I was talking about. And now about. they know exactly who, he's, who you're talking about again. Uh, well, no, the story's been out. Yeah, yeah sure. that's what, well, the question was Joe Klopp yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. So, well, we, just for in sure, case, pay attention. But just in case anybody else didn't know, that's who it is. Yeah. Right? Well, no, so, we, any of you new listeners, it's Joe Klopp. I've talked to Joe. Yeah, he's well aware. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, Joe, hey, Joe, you know what? You broke your dick. You're basically a perfect looking human being. So if you got a little crimp in your dick, you're fine. Yeah, your dick is shaped like an L now. You'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah. You can fuck around corners. Don't be a baby. Yeah. Change your hip game up. Yeah. All right. Next one. Um, I recently started working out and have noticed I'm very unbalanced when it comes to the strength of my right and left sides of my body. Are there Ooh. any ways to help balance myself out in the weight room? Yeah, great, it's, great it's, cook. It's, it's your core. It's your core, and you got to work on uh, core stability and use um, uh, medicine balls and all that stuff. You need to get with the trainer to do all that. We use physio balls, medicine balls, the TRX. There's all sorts of core exercise you can do to balance that out uh ask at lauren landau or at ben bruno training those guys are no better but 100 percent, you need to work on your core if you're off balance like that. they say that a lot of the, a lot of injuries um i guess the nfl now does these full body screenings where uh this guy gray cook will that runs you through i think it's eight different exercises because they find that a lot of injuries happen because you're just out of balance. Like you have, you're really strong in one area and you hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. if, if something's hurting, it's, it's overcompensate for something else. And then that's where injuries come from. Right. But if you have a stable core, if the, if you have a stable midsection, everything else gets in line. Probably on academy.com has a lot of exercises for that too. On right? academy, on it slash academy.com. On it slash academy. Maybe it's on it. Dot com slash academy. Yeah. That's right. Go You'll there. Find it. You'll you get find some it. ideas. Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. Yeah. All right. Next one. Big Brown, I've been been doing jujitsu off and on for five years. I recently started up again and pursuing higher belts. I'm getting tapped all the time and it's getting kind of frustrating. How do you keep yourself from getting frustrated on the mats? Why would you get frustrated that you're getting tapped? That means you're going with good guys. If you're not getting tapped, you're in the wrong gym. So the the fact that you're getting submitted all the time is a good thing. You're only going to get better. It's in the gym. No, Anyone who keeps track or talks about how many guys they tap in training, you loser. You loser. You loser. Yeah, so who cares? It's good you're getting submitted. It means you're going with good guys. But now if you're getting submitted with the same move over and over after months, well, then maybe it's not for you. What do you got, Ev? Next one. Brian, would you ever or do you have any plans on writing a book? No. I don't think I'm qualified, and I don't think <clears throat> I have anything. I think books should be written by people who have something new to say or have a strong rebuttal to a current argument. Our agent says something different. Just had a call with him. That's interesting. No, we'll <laughs> write a book that way. I, I'd love to write a tongue-in-cheek book and a fun book. Well, they're not asking you to write know. a book on French Revolution, Callan. Yeah. Hey, man, for sure stay in your lane. I guess uh, They're not asking you to drop knowledge book. Yeah. I guess uh, – Maybe yeah. in the life of Brian well, Callen? If, oh, are the fighter and the kid going to write a book? Yes. Yeah, so that's a question for but, the fighter and the but, kid. But for Brian, the question was, Brian, do you want to write a book? The answer is no. I don't know if I'm ready to write a book on the philosophy of – yeah, no, man. I well, isn't it funny how it. Rob Lowe has two books, but Stephen Jobs never wrote one book? <laughs> it's like mm. – It's not, though. Why? Why? Jobs was busy doing other stuff. Sure, I'm just saying – I'd rather read what Steve Jobs has to say, and he never wrote, wrote a book. I think a lot of people write books and probably without much to say. I know a lot of people that write books make a ton of money. It's New York, you know, Times not, bestseller. Not, probably not the reason to write a book, but yeah, if you want to make a lot of money. There are other ways to do it. A lot of them are entertaining too, though. Maybe I haven't read them, so what do I know? The answer is there's a good chance in the future the fighter and the kid might author a book. All right, there we go. And it'll God, be the mother. It'll be the mother of all books. Good God. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> well, I get that all question right. a lot, though. We will do one more here. All right, last fan question: How do you handle a coworker that drives you nuts, but you have to work together every single day? You know, one of the reasons I am an entertainer and a stand-up comic and a podcaster is because I don't have to really deal with coworkers. Besides my husband Brendan Schaub over here. Oh, this is a marriage, by the way. You do know that, right? We're in a marriage, bro. Dude, me and Callan were together the entire day yesterday from 5 a.m. because I he had to pick me up on our way to set to film this movie. So my tire blew, which was not fun on the Porsche. And I spent the entire day with Callan. I got to be honest, man. You're weird. I got a little dark. <laughs> He's so... I was like, oh. I, I went back home. I threw you under the bus. Joe was like, how was it? I was like... Ah oh, man, Callan's a weird dude. Talking to myself, He's like where I was like, he would talk to himself and I'd then say things randomly. He said, so he'd be driving, 
And then he'd be like, so how you feeling, man? And I, well, I was talking about movies. I was like, dude, movies are weird, man. Like, I'd do more of them, but it was kind of a hurry up and wait, and then you shoot, and then you're back. You got your first taste of acting. We haven't even talked about this. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, we're we doing shot a that. movie yesterday. We shot a movie, and then, and then Callan's like, oh, you having fun? I'm like, yeah. And then Callan just sees something like, what do you think of mental issues, man? I'm like, what? And then he's like, oh, I'm not doing stand up anymore. I'm like, you hold on. You ever seen Fern Gully? You know Batty, who has the zzz, Robin Williams? That's Brian the Kid Kelly. Fern Gully. He's Batty. First he, of all, I was super tired. He'd just be talking and he'd be like, zzz, I'm not doing stand up anymore. I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about it. He's like, yeah, we can. Zzz. Dude, my kids are driving me nuts. I'm like, no, yeah, that's an issue. Then zzz. this LA traffic, man, I'll tell you what. Not, I can't answer, though. Yeah. I can't answer. No, first of all, and I, then he'd go, how's the T-shirts doing? I'm like, yeah. oh, God. I was in the corner of his Passat like this. I couldn't wait to get out he of that He goes like car. this. He goes, he goes. I got out and walked. He goes home. like this. Goes, I got out and walked. He usually drops me off at the door. I was like, oh, I'll just walk here. It's he goes, not a big deal. He, 100 degrees out, sweats, jeans. I'm he sweating goes like this. Up. I think at one point I go like this. I'm driving. And I'm just tired of shit. And I'm just, I'm just feeling blase. And I go, I might shave my head and quit everything. And then he goes like this. He goes, there's a pause, and he goes, "Hey, you weird guy, huh?" Just I go, weird. I go, huh? He goes, "You're weird, huh?" I go, "Yep." Sometimes it just get dark, and I just, and I was playing a little bit of a character, but I was nah. He wasn't. He's gonna try making a joke out of it. I was weirded out, yeah, man. man. You're not gonna lie to you. Won't look at you the same, right? Won't spent, look at you. Spent hey, from five a.m. to you know. Three. I did too, but I didn't yeah. freak out, man. Yeah, hey, I can I be honest with out. you, little honesty? You're unstable. Yeah, <laughs> you're unstable. <laughs> you think I need some help? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, you're a little all over some the place. Some days I just get like that. Some days I'm just like, you know what? Well, you know what I figured out? I just don't care right now. No, it's every day, man. Maybe it's weird, huh? You never know. Maybe that's what happens to me after this podcast. Like I turn into a pumpkin after three in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I've started looking for replacements. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It was weird. First day f- taste of acting is interesting. How about that, right? How about that wait, uh, hurry up and wait? You want to be an actor, huh? Okay. What would you think overall? It was cool, man. A yeah. lot of good dudes. Yeah. It's funny. We had to ad-lib some shit. Yeah. We were uh, uh, security guards. We wouldn't let this guy in. Me and Calum were, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just ripping, ripping off the top. Yeah. Having people laugh. It was fun. It was fun, man. We made him laugh. You had some good ad- ad-libs there. It's funny, right? Um, Very funny. We had him laughing. Um, Where can they find you? <laughs> oh, no, Calgary. You- Calgary, next, when is that? next week, uh, October 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Yuck, yucks. Can't wait. Come out. We're going to have some fun. Booyah. Uh, Finding the Kid live show. More tickets available. I don't know if they're still available, but I'm going to let you guys know about it anyways. Uh, Ontario.improv.com or go to tfatk.com. Uh, one night, one show only. November 24th. 5th. November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving, yes, correct? Sir, Wednesday. Wednesday, one night only, Ontario. Come out, get the tickets. They sell fast. It's going to be a magical night. And then we are in Arizona, which is already sold out November 12th in Tempe. And then I'm there Arizona. the 13th, 14th, 15th, so get your get tickets. Get your tickets. See the kid. I will not be there, so you will just enjoy the kid. Uh, Master Kim Zombie shirts and Abbott Kenny Halloween limited edition shirts. Very few left. T fat T fat K dot com. You know the deal. This is Fire the Kid with Psycho Mike. We're out. We're out.